Hello and welcome to Coach Richard Wacker Stadium here in Glassboro, New Jersey. A beautiful evening here at the tail end of the month of August where Rowan football will open up the 2023 season playing host to the out-of-conference opponent in the Stevenston Mustangs. I'm Aaron Hook, joined alongside Sam Prince and Justin Locke to my right and a really exciting for uh, really exciting season, guys, for Rowan football on the brink here. They're coming off their best win-loss record in a season in nearly a decade since all the way back to 2014. Seven and three last year, four and two in the end jack. This was one of the best offenses in the conference. They had arguably the best quarterback wide receiver duo in the conference. It, it was a Rowan team that was really fun to watch last year. Jay Corsi, longtime Rowan head coach. Um, uh, it, it was a season for him that was really kind of, you know, a proving ground because Rowan in the years before that uh, consistently under 500, but a bounce back season for the Profs last season. And now a pretty exciting opener, you know, their usual opponent in week one, the Widener Pride, who come from the same conference as Stevenson, the uh, Middle Atlantic Conference. They're not scheduled to host Widener at all this season. Pretty interesting schedule change for the Profs. Instead, they get Stevenson as here they come out onto the field to the delight of the fans here in Glassboro. But guys, a, a really exciting kind of transition year for the Profs. Coming off a successful year last year, this is going to be a year where now they can really try and make a big stamp on the end jack, competing with the top two teams uh, perennially the last couple of years um, in Christopher Newport and Salisbury. Yes, Aaron, this Rowan team is nothing but to be excited for last year, as you said, coming off a career record of seven and three. Last time they had a better record was in 2014. Finished third in the end jack behind Salisbury and Christopher Newport. Those are gonna be the two games where everyone has marked their calendar as a Rowan fan. That Christopher Newport is coming to Glassboro on October 14th, and Salisbury is coming to Dick, coming to coach Richard Wacker Field on October 21st. But for tonight, it's gonna be all James Farr. If Farr can do it, he's the man. Yeah, I mean, you look at it, both uh, teams have a newer quarterback uh, on the field tonight. I mean, Nair Wilson uh, for Stevenson, and then you got, obviously, Noah Brunati for the home Rowan Prof team. And it's going to be entering, and as, as Sam said, I mean, James Farah is the clear leader of this team. Obviously, Jay Corsi, the coach of the Profs, he, he's got a, a scheme out here tonight. And again, Stevenson went 8-3 last year. They almost won the MAC Conference last year. I said, Middle Atlantic Conference. They lost to Johns Hopkins in their last game. They have, again, yeah, they got a lot of... Uh, this is a good, good game. Pressure on both sides. Again, Frost went 7 3, as Sam said. It's going to be a good one and uh, see what the, uh, which quarterback comes out on top tonight. And Rowan also set to host Johns Hopkins later on in the season. We'll honor our country and we'll be right back for kickoff.
Obviously, they say goodbye to Mike Husney, a guy who over the last couple of years was really a dynamic player for them behind center. He was a guy who threw for 18 touchdowns last year, most in the conference, and he was a guy who also used his legs a bunch as well. Uh, that was a big part of their offense last year, and now they pivot to the true sophomore out of Lacey Township and Jay. Noah Brunati is going to get the start tonight for the profs. It's going to be his first action in a profs uniform, and so we'll see how he performs tonight. But obviously big expectations for Rowan this year. Also, a lot of question marks kind of mixed in, guys. It's a pretty interesting kind of mix going into the season as the profs are set to kick it off. Stevenson bat deep to return. And it is Peter Parigi, the senior kicker. The lefty winds up and boots it deep. Stevenson is going to muff the kick right at the goal line. Rowan trying to dive on it, and they do. Moving towards the end zone, a flag flies, but what a start here for the Profs. We'll check the flag. However, Rowan dies on the first play of the ball game from kickoff, maybe set up inside their own five. This is a very young and hungry team, and they showed it. Capitalizing on Stevenson's mistakes. We'll see. Flag pending. Referees still discussing here. Ball was muffed right at the goal line on the side of Stevenson. Dylan Johnson was the return man. And the ball bounced towards the prof sideline where it was then uh, strooped up by Nick Cerulli, the junior linebacker. And he nearly made his way into the end zone. As now we'll get the call from the officials down on the field. The penalty is going to go against Stevenson. We'll see where they mark the props, guys, but they're going to be inside their own three-yard line. It looks like just a great start here uh, for Noah Brunati in this props offense. And it's a great start, but the man that they're going to be giving the ball to is James Farah, one of the captains of this team, returning senior. Last year, Farah was just short of 1,000 yards and had six rushing touchdowns. Most of those rushing touchdowns were goal line sand touchdowns. So this is exactly where you want to have him if you're the Rowan Bronx. James Farrow, the senior out of Point Pleasant, New Jersey, playing with uh, a guy who used to play against a lot in high school down the shore, Mike Husney, last year the quarterback for Rowan. And now it is Brunati out of the shotgun. Here comes John Scalibur, the tight end in motion left to right. They will hand it off to Farrah. Outside zone run here, and Farrah is going to get tripped up. And actually, it looks like lose a yard as it was first and 10 there. Rowan starting on the Stevenson seven yard line. And Farrah does get knocked back to yard, so second and 11. Or second and goal, I should say, coming up. Yeah, as Sam said, I mean, Farrah's going to get the ball. He gets it right on that first play. Tough to avoid every uh, def defender. You're going to know what the play's coming. Farrah, again, their leader, so most likely going to see hit, uh, the ball in his hands at second down here. Farrah again here to the left of Brunati. And this time, a little bit of a delay diff. Farris stood up at the line and pushed back. Stevenson defensively on the first couple of plays, really not allowing any breathing room for Rowan on the ground. So if you're Rowan here, you're gonna test Bernardi, and I think they're gonna go to the left, and they're gonna go with Carstrom, who's the returning junior out of West Long Branch, New Jersey in 2021. He was a team's top kick returner, averaging 19.3 yards per return but let's see if he can turn his speed in the field. The departure of John Maldonado, Carlson really stepping into that wide receiver one role for the props. He's split out wide to the left with a man in the slot to the left of Brunati. He'll drop back here on third and goal. Fire back shoulder right side, and that ball is too high. Therefore, his intended target was looking for Corey Gordon, the junior. And instead, looks like the props, even though they start inside their own 10 on their opening drive, guys, We'll have to settle here for a field goal try. Peter Parigi, the kickoff man, will be the holder. And the man to take the kick will be Connor Batten, the junior kicker from Woodstown High School. Monroeville is where he hails from. And Batten going to line it up here, looking for the first points of this Rowan football season. Snap is good. The kick is up. And the kick is wide to the right. And Batten with the wind blowing out pretty uh, heavily here tonight, guys, at the start of the ball game. 
Ben lets the ball get caught up in the wind that time, and Rowan comes up empty on their opening drive of the season. Yeah, I mean, Batten right there, you saw the wind. It was wide right. I mean, even on that initial kickoff, you saw Johnson kind of the sun's on him, the wind's on him. You don't really know where the ball's going. And you've seen two uh, possessions uh, kind of go up empty here, and now uh, Mustangs get the ball here. Hey, guys, uh, even up in the booth, it's extremely windy. You can see how he misses that. But Rowan's got to brush that off and have a short-term memory tonight. And now here comes the Mustang offense, led by their junior quarterback, Nair Wilson, the native of Wilmington, Delaware, not too far from Glasgow, about 45 minutes away. A little inside give on the first play of the ball game. Elijah Marquez, the sophomore back, getting the give, and he doesn't get much on that play, as he'll only get one to the Rowan 21-yard line. Bring up second and nine here, and nearly two minutes gone by in the opening quarter as the crowd starts to fill in here at the bleachers at Coach Wacker Stadium. As a flag flies in the backfield, looks like Stevenson is going to be pushed back. And that time called against Jordan Reyes, number 54, for Stevenson. And so. Ray is committing the penalty there. Put up second down and now 14 for the Mustangs. Four wide receivers set here. Play action, throw across the middle, is brought in over the 30 to about the 32 yard line. And Pat Gorman is the one on the receiving end there, the senior from Richmond, Virginia. But we have another flag down in the backfield here for Stevenson and two pretty critical mistakes guys back-to-back -back plays is gonna push him back five more and Rowan giving up a depletion that time they catch a break yeah it was a hold there on Stevenson they're gonna go back even though good catch by wide receiver one Pat Gorman again sophomore as you said he's gonna be really looked at tonight in the passing game and again he had a good look there it's just a hole that's gonna set them back another five or ten yards and now they're getting closer to uh, a safety potential here you never know. You never saw off these safeties, and it would be pretty pretty nice for Rowan to have a safety capitalize on this defensive stop potentially. Stevenson pushed all the way back to their own six-yard line now. It'll bring up second down at 24. 12:43 left in this first quarter. Now we get some more whistles before Stevenson can line up. Officials going to discuss and so we've seen the early mistakes of Stevenson really kind of hurt them in the early going. Rowan was a team last year guys that was kind of hurt by penalties in a lot of games of their own and obviously still winning seven games shows the talent that they have. Head coach Jay Corsi obviously wanted to make that a focal point for his team in the offseason. A lot of turnover obviously for this profs team as now Wilson lines up out of the shotgun handoff and again, not getting much, perhaps a couple yards forward to the eight. That time is Marquez, second uh, rush for him. And both sides, guys, run defense-wise, really closing these gaps. I mean, neither team has really gotten it going on the ground here in the early going. So that'll bring up third down and 23 here. Stevenson at their own nine-yard line. Mustangs, eight and three last year. They came in second in the MAC preseason poll. Rowan did receive a first place vote in the NJAC preseason poll. They were ranked third behind Christopher Newport and Salisbury. Here's Wilson firing and it's picked off. And to the end zone goes Eric Bryant for the pick six. You just love to see it. Eric Bryant, a short, short guy just like me, 5'7", little no, we're the same height. So love to see our short guys do something great. And Eric Bryant, he was spot on with the ball. Timing was perfect. That read could not have been any better by Bryant. Yeah, it's two picks last year for Bryant. And he's getting on the board early. First game of the season. Again, late August here. And on cue, Bryant, third and 22, breaks up the play. And he takes it home for the cross. And last year, he was he was named two years ago the 2021 NJAC Player of the Week well, against William Patterson, where he had eight tackles in one game. Extra point for the Profs is up and good from Corey Batten. And so guys, the Profs got a big break on the opening kickoff, could score. 
But that time, the, the, the defense really kind of uh, did it all there. I mean, forcing a third and long and forcing Wilson to step up and throw into double coverage, and Eric Bryant steps right in front of that pass and takes it to the house. Bryant, with a couple of interceptions last year, gets his first of the season, and Rowan scores for the first time this season. They go up 7-0. Yeah, I mean, you look at it, I mean, Marquez and Wilson, two newer guys on the offense for uh, the Mustangs, and again, they were pushed back after a hold and a false start, and you kind of had to force a, a pass into a, a pocket there, and they tried to get it to Corman there, and a great play by Brian, and it, he kept one step ahead of the receiver, and now the playoffs could have been up at least 10-0, but now it's still a 7-0 game there for them. Hey, you're still winning as long as you're winning. It doesn't matter what the score is when it's final. It doesn't matter if you win by one. It doesn't matter if you win by 100. A win is a win, and a loss is a loss. And Parigi will send it away, and over end. And again, take it right at the five-yard line here for the Mustangs. And running into his own man that time on the return is Johnson. And being wrapped up at just about the 15-yard line. And they will mark him right at the 18. So that's where the Mustangs will begin this second drive. And guys, really for Wilson that time, third and long. It, it seemed like he kind of had time in the pocket. A little bit of a forced throw, though, up the left side. And this Rowan defense, only eight interceptions all of last year. But that defensive front that we're going to get a glimpse at today was really kind of uh, their bread and butter last year. They have a bunch of guys that can create pressure in the backfield. And as they're a little bit late getting up to the line here, we're sure to see that the rest of the way. Here's Wilson with a sweep give here to the left side, cutting it back across the 20 to about the 21-yard line that time is Martez. And that will make it second down and seven, a three-yard gain there for Marquez to the 21-yard line. Here's Wilson now. Man in motion coming across the line is Gorman. And Wilson gonna hand it off here. Martez with some room out to the right side. He crosses the 30, or 25 I should say, and down to about the 27 yard line that time, picking up six yards. Close to a first down is Martez, but now we have an injured prof down on the field. Training staff quit to get out there. And obviously now we wanna see guys early on in this ball game. Only four minutes gone by. Yeah, you're right. But there are, I think there are two injured props on the field in at around the 30 yard right. line. Two guys are down. And obviously for Jay Corsi and company, going into any new season, you know, health has to be a priority, keeping everybody uh, locked in and, and ready to go. And right now the profs seemingly might be down one or two guys here. And they're bringing a stretcher out. This is, you, you hate to see whatever the stretcher's out. Um, going to try and get you the two guys down on the field right now. Crowd is silent. Yeah, the prof closest to us on that 30 uh, hasn't really moved since uh, Marquez kind of had that hits uh, that truck really against him and hopefully he's okay and obviously the other prof uh, on the far side of the uh, field. see walking off now uh, for the profs. Looks like number 25, that's John Perez, the safety. He's coming over back to the sideline. He's going to be a big part of the defense this year. Perez, along with Jason Blanks in the secondary for the profs, were a very good tandem last year. And Perez seems to be all right. He's walking off with the trainer. And as for the other profs, still trying to get identification on who it is and obviously hoping for the best all the medical staff out there and just as everyone's down on a knee right now Stevenson sideline as well all taking a knee
So not sure how much longer staff's going to be out there, how much longer it's going to take to get everything situated and back in place. So for now, here on Rowan Athletics, we'll take a step off, and once the injury timeout is over, we'll be back here in the first quarter. Rowan leads at 7 nothing.
We're back here in Glassboro. Rowan leads this one seven nothing, four minutes into the first quarter here in the season opener. Had a bit of a scary scene uh, just a moment ago as a Rowan defender took the hit on that last play. Stevenson running back, Elijah Martez hit the dap and a Rowan defender came in, tried to make the play took a hit and was down on the field really without movement for a few minutes and now you can hear the crowd kind of rallying around this profs team losing one of their guys uh, right in the middle there of this defense for them and so just obviously uh, a scene here in Glassboro to lose a player like that and in the fashion that it occurred a stretcher was brought out initially and thank goodness that didn't have to be used as here's the play on third down and one Stevenson from their own 27 trying to push it forward they go with the QB run Wilson taking it himself and looks like they are going to move the chains here to first down for Stevenson but guys obviously just um, a, a scary sight for sure just a few minutes into your season and, and to obviously already have a, a scene like that occur yeah, Profs are going to have to rally around that and, and losing a key piece of their defense um, in the process. And so now a fresh set of downs here for Stevenson. First down and 10 from their own 28. They throw behind the sticks here and they complete it to Gorman, the senior receiver, to second catch, but they are going to lose a yard or so here. Wait, I thought his first reception was going to get called back. That was a that was a flag, wasn't it? Yeah, it was so his first catch for Gorman. My apologies. So I'm, I'm here. Don't worry. <laughs> and now they mark it. Looks like right at the 23 yard line. So moving back five yards there on the penalty. Another one against Stevenson. We've seen a few um, flags go up against them. Couple holding calls. Now an offside. It's Wilson. On second and 15, Gibb goes to Martez, and he's not getting much. Second and 15 from the 22 that time, and Martez barely getting back to the line. In fact, he is only to do just that, and so that'll bring up third and 15 here. Stevenson on their own 22-yard line. This Prof's defense then ended the last drive on third down with a pit six from Eric Bryant. Let's see what they can do here. Rowan gonna rush their front four here as Wilson drops back. He's got a lot of time. He fires and he throws it incomplete. Target that time across the middle was looking for Gavin Vetter. Couldn't complete it to him in coverage that time for the Profs was Vincent Guarino, the linebacker. He made a great leaping attempt. He nearly got a hand on that ball. And now Stevenson going to punt here on fourth down and 15. Terry Karlstrom back, hanging out around the 45 here, set to receive the punt for the profs. And Brody Campbell will send it away. Spiraling kick, moving towards the Stevenson sideline. Carlstrom will call for the fair catch right at the 45, and that's where the Profs will start their second offensive drive here of the evening. We, we didn't really see much from the offense the first time around, guys. It, it was, you know, Farah down near the goal line. Actually, you know, obviously, I should say they started that first drive inside their own 10 because of the miscue from Stevenson on the opening kickoff. So really the first sense of, of, of how Rowan is going to be able to put together a full drive here in 2023 um, here under Noah Brunati. And here he is. Two men split out wide to the right. Calls from the little man to the left. Farrah to the right in the backfield. And the ball does go to him. Farrah going to climb to the second level, getting near midfield, down at about the 49. It's a gain of four. And that'll make it second and six here for the props. And you're going to be seeing that all night long. They're gonna pound the ball to James Farr. They're still letting Brunetti come in, but trust me, tonight it's been a night of James Farr. 
Yeah, tonight's going to be an interesting one. Both defenses uh, are here to play, and it's, again, two new quarterbacks, so we'll see what can do on this drive. Same set here from Rowan. Now here comes Carlson in motion. Little jet sweep, and he's going to be knocked down four or five yards behind the line of scrimmage. So the sweep play there from Carlstrom coming across to get it backfires for the profs. And this is going to make it third down and long as they are going to mark them at the 44. And so that will put it at third and 11 here for the profs. The first touch Carlstrom got tonight outside of obviously the fair catch on the punt return a moment ago. James Farrow, third in the conference in rushing last year, 945 yards, six touchdowns. And he's out there once again, now to the left. Here of the quarterback in Brunati. Four wide receivers out there for the props. Brunati's gonna step up, fire to Carlstrom, but he's got him to the 40, and now across the 35, down at the 33. A first down completion there, Brunati, a great job, guys, to step up in the pocket and find his man Carlstrom over the middle. We love to see it. Last year, Carlson had two touchdowns and 44 receptions. Just under 500 yards, expecting a big year for Carlson. Yeah, right there you see the elusiveness. But Brunati gets out of the pocket, finds his man, and gets a first down after it wasn't looking so good on that drive. Now here's Brunati. Four wide receiver set again. Here he goes, drops back. Little wide receiver bubble screen. Carlson gets it across the 30. And he worked his way down to the 27. A little six yard gain there on first down. It'll be second and four for the Profs coming up. 6.50 to play in the opening quarter. And Rowan with that wide receiver set out there. They get Jay Chick, number 16 out there on the field. Corey Gordon, who uh, was the product of an incompletion earlier on in the game from Brunati. Karlstrom just had the last couple of receptions. Just going to hang out in the slot now to the left. Here he comes in motion again. And this time they hand it off to Farah. And Farah stood up again. Pushed back to the 30. It's a big front for Stevenson defensively. And so they're going to lose yards there. And that will make it third down and seven here for the Frost. Shields with the tackle. You know, Shields today is someone that they're going to have to watch out for. But if they can, if Farrah can use his exclusiveness, speed, they'll be fine. Farrah, he's just getting warmed up. This is Rowan. Look, he's going a lot to the left. This is what Farrah's got to do. He's got to go cut to the right because the Stevenson defenders will be coming to the left. Third and four. Flag. And it'll be a false start against the profs. We'll push him back five yards. And that time. They get it on Connor Smith. Smith, the left guard, left tackle, I should say, number 63. So now Rowan, third down and nine. They push him back five yards to the Stevenson 32. Here's Brunati. Rowan to his right. He'll just flip it out to the flat for Farah. Farah trying to turn the wedge and get to first down yardage. He gets close to the 25, pushed out right there at about the 26. And so he'll be a few yards short, needs three more to get to that 23. It'll be fourth and three inside Stevenson's territory. It looks like Rowan is gonna keep the offense out here on the field. Now, they're gonna go for it. If I was Rowan, I would do a quick slant wrap to Terry Carlstrom because he's been on fire. Just get him keep on fire. Why wouldn't you do something different if it's working? You're not wrong, but you gotta really spread the wealth here and maybe they go to somebody that hasn't touched the ball here and see what they can do as whistle's blown here. And more whistles before the play. It looks like Jay Corsi wants a timeout and he'll use the first of his three. Jay Corsi, the longtime head coach here at Rowan University and really guys enjoyed the success of last year after obviously the COVID season in 2020 and then 2021, Rowan just a two win team a, a bounce back season was really needed for them and, and they got it in a big way with the seven and three record last year. Some staple wins here at home. And so again, it's a props team with a lot of high expectations, but a very good Stevenson squad on the other side as well. One of the best teams in their conference. 
the Middle Atlantic, and it's looked like a heavyweight battle so far. Really, both uh, both teams in the trenches have done an excellent job. Rowan has opened up the passing game a little bit here on this drive. Yeah, you're right. But you talk about an improvement from 2020 on for 2022. That's a five-plus game improvement. You don't say it often. That's a five-plus game improvement from a two-win team to a seven-win team. Could you just imagine the improvement what Rowan could have this year? Yeah, and you look at it, I mean, again, both teams last year, second place in the, in the MAC was, was Stevenson. I mean, and they've shown it up front defensively. Again, the only touchdown we've seen is a defensive touchdown early in this game. And so here come the profs. Now fourth down and three. Stevenson, 26-yard line. They need to get to the 23. Kevin Dednan and Terry Carlstrom out to the left. Barra to the left of Brunati. He'll go deep down the right side. And... Jenny pushed to the ground that time was Gordon, the intended wide receiver. A flag is down in the backfield on what looked like a, a potential pass interference call there. It could have gone against Stevenson. Gordon was knocked to the ground. We'll see what the flag is here in the Rowan backfield. Perhaps a rough in the passer call, and that might be what it is. Number 54, Daniel Johnson on the side of Stevenson has his hands up in the air, and it is a rough in the passer call against the Mustangs, another critical penalty committed by them, and Rowan's going to get a fresh set of downs here, guys. When you get a fresh set of downs, this is a lucky break for Rowan. you got to capitalize on this type of opportunity. Yeah, I mean, even kind of, like you said, on the reception, it was looked like it could have been a pass interference, but again, Crofts roughing the passer is going to help him out, and they're Marvin, inside the red zone here. Marvin Manassa was the one on the coverage there against Gordon. No call on that play, but the roughing the passer call sets Rowan up at the Stevenson 13 yard line. Third, first down and 10, Brunati gonna keep it himself here as they fake the dip to Carlson as he comes in motion. And Brunati will get across the 10. And we'll see what they give him on that road. And Brunati, for the Profs, he's the second leading rusher tonight with zero, with, with four yards. We've seen Brunati a couple of times. Definitely has the wheels, and uh, it's a good, a uh, good 5'10 frame. He can uh, move around the pocket. It's a good thing to see for the cross. Brian Kelly was the one with the stop for Stevenson. Gain a five on that last play. Now they go to Farah on the ground, and James Farah not going to get a ton here. And so it looks like they'll mark him right at the eight. No gain on that play. Going to be third down and five coming up here for the Profs as we approach four minutes left in this opening quarter. Farah. Now with six runs for three yards. And so again, Stevenson has been really good defending the run of the prop so far. Here they come. They have three wide receivers split out with John Scaliba, the tight end on the left side of the line. Denden and Gordon out left. Carlson from the low man to the right. Farrow to the left of Brunati here on third and five. And as he takes the snap, a flag will fly. And seemingly this will be against the Profs. Yeah, first in the MAC conference in our rush defense was Stevenson last year. Again, they were contending. Uh, they only lost to Johns Hopkins in, in that MAC championship game. And again, they've shown time and time again, they know the scouting report, they know Farah is going to be the leader, and he's done a, they've done a good job against him tonight. And just speaking of Johns Hopkins, Rowan's next home game, September 30th, against Johns Hopkins. An exciting matchup. So you get two of the, the best teams in the MAC <laughs> within your first uh, three weeks of action. Good test for the profs on what will now become third and 10 after the false start. Bernardi dropping back, pocket collapsing, and he finds Carlstrom from over the middle again, caught at the 10, and he's quickly wrapped up there. And Stevenson again defensively very quick Tyson Blakeney was in on the tackle. Clarence Travis is well in on the stop, and so Rowan will attempt a field goal here for the second time tonight. Call this about a 27 yarder. And Corey Batten's tick is up, and it is good. So the Profs hit three on what we could call their first quote-unquote real drive of the night, guys. And they take a 10-0 lead here with 2.25 left in the opening quarter. 
you love to see it. As you said, their first real offensive drive. I like how you stated that. But a lot of plays by the sophomore quarterback, Renati, who this is his first career game. You're starting quarterback. Look, you're going to have a little rough spots, but he's shown nothing but toughness and that uh, he can control his offense this season. Absolutely, and we've seen Bernardi and Karlstrom. They already had that early season connection. So far, three receptions, 33 yards for Karlstrom. Had a good play there to get it a little closer to the goal line, and this time, good field goal there. Makes it 10-0 by Batten. So Connor Batten's tick makes it 10-0. And Peter Parigi out there to send the ball away to Stevenson once again. Stevenson has not done much offensively as well. It's been Elijah Marquez on the ground. Five attempts for 10 yards to this point. Gorman with the one reception that was for negative yards. And then everything else has been Nair Wilson. One run for a yard, one for three through the air with that pitch six that he threw. And so Stevenson really has been stifled by this Frost defense as well. There's Parigi, the lefty with uh, a sideways spinning kick that wisely, it seems this time, Dylan Johnson will just let bounce into the end zone as to not make another mistake there with his hands. And this will set Stevenson up right at their own 20 yard line here as the Profs defense comes back out onto the field. And uh, I believe we can identify guys, the player that was down and injured earlier for Rowan and had to be taken uh, off the field and looks like it was number nine uh, and Brad Small, one of their linebackers, a junior from Sicklerville and was slated to really step in and, and contribute here for the profs um, as a, a rotational guy for them. And for him to go down early on, obviously the profs are gonna keep him in their prayers as will we up here in the Rowan Athletics booth. Flag will fly here after the completion as Wilson threw it out to the left to his running back in Marquez, but that play could be coming back here. Stevenson being penalized a, a ton early on here, guys. And I feel like in this game, on both teams are Rowan and Stevenson, there's just penalty after penalty, so whatever team get the lucky break, it's gonna have to take that break. And it will be a call against the Mustangs, offensive Tackle number 74, Alex Aviles, the junior, gonna be whistled for unnecessary roughness. Third penalty on a knife for Stevenson, and we're barely through the first quarter. Yeah, something they gotta clean up again. It's been killing a lot of momentum. I mean, we've seen a couple receptions get called back because of the penalties, and again, this is Wilson's first start uh, in his collegiate career, so he's trying to get any pass he can get. He's got two that's been called back so far. Yeah, and Wilson stepping in for Ryan Sedwick, guys, who has been the quarterback, or was the quarterback, I should say, at Stevenson uh, for three seasons, was part of the All-MAC second team in 2021. He's a guy who is going to rank at the top of the school leaderboards in both completions and passing yards. And so to move on from a guy like that, obviously big shoes to fill uh, for Nair Wilson. Play out to the right there on first down. Will net Stevenson five yards. Second down and 15 here from their own 18. With Wilson taking the snap. Play action. They fake it to Martez over the middle. Gorman with the catch and is immediately leveled right after, but is able to hang on. Big hit that time coming from the safety in Jason Blanks. And Gorman able to make the catch. And a first down here for Stevenson. Oh no, third down and five still to go after they were pushed back after that penalty. So here on their own third, he needed to get to the 35. Minute 15 left to go here in the opening quarter. Rowing up 10 nothing, Looking for another stop, another defensive stand on third down. Here's Wilson dropping back, firing out to the right pass. Is broken up. And it's Eric Bryan a dead making a play. And Eric Bryant that has been all over the field. First score of the game, a pick six, and he's broken up that pass. Look, Bryant is the man who's stepping up for this Rowan defense. He's the reason why they're ahead by 10. Yeah, we've seen uh, really the, the pass game, it's been a struggle early on. We've seen the defensive line kind of get to Wilson a little bit, and the rush game has been kind of 
silent tonight so far. Prof's got some big names on this team and they're, they're showing it off tonight. So Stevenson will send it away. Carlson from that deep to return. This is one will die shy of the 40, be down inside the 45. Rowan will be in there. That drive looks like right at their own 42. Good field position again for Noah Brunati and the offense with Rowan ahead 10 0. As we thank you all for tuning in here to the season opener on Rowan Athletics, Aaron Hook, Sam Prince, Justin Locke with you. Covering these games was a lot of fun last season, guys, and you guys new to the booth this year, so it should be a fun time. Again, we were talking about Hopkins coming in later in the season and a couple other opponents, Salisbury going to visit Glassboro this year. They've won the end chat the last couple of years as Bernardi on first down. What's it deep here on play action? And it is off the hands of Kevin Denden, who had no one within 15 yards of him over the middle of the field. Would have been a big hook up there, but instead an incomplete pass, second and 10. That's what you want to have back. That's what when you look into the film room on Monday, you're going to be mad about that. If he catches that, that's a touchdown. Yeah, absolutely. It's a good one of those plays you wish you could have back. Again, Prof's already up 10-0, but Brunati, I mean, good arm there, good pass, but just out of the reach of Degman and now back to second and 10. Brunati now with Ferrer to his right. Two wide receivers split out to the right. Bobbles the snap, but flag is down right as the ball came out of the hands of the center in Beauchard. And so be a false start and a five yard penalty here against the props. They made it second down and 15. They're pushed back to their own 39. Similar formation here for Rowan on second and 15. 48 seconds to play. Carlstrom in motion. And he is wrapped up again in the backfield, losing that time nearly 10 yards. Flying in there on the back end to make the stop. Tyshawn Fitzgerald, number seven, got in there, wrapped him up. Stevenson really defending a lot of these sweep plays for Rowan, a lot of these kind of motion plays very well. They seem all over the uh, profs kind of pre-snap stuff. And so Rowan now backed up to their own 32. Third down and 22 as the clock winds down. Final 30 seconds of the quarter here. Brunati. A quick hitter out to the right. Pass is caught. Kevin Denden across the 35 to the 36 as they did about four or five yards there. They'll be well short of the marker and they will punt as soon as the clock here for the first quarter runs out. Final 10 seconds ticking away here at Coach Wacker Stadium in Glassboro. We're almost done with the quarter and well, had nothing to start for Rowan. You, you can't really get much better than that. And the clock stops with three seconds and <laughs> Coach of course he's gonna burn that second timeout with just three seconds left, so they want to get the punt off here in this first quarter. So bring his group over to the sideline. Yeah, we touched on the schedule a little bit earlier, but first four games here, not against NJAC opponents. Obviously, Stevenson tonight, McDaniel at Westminster, Maryland next week on the ninth. And you got Ursinus here back in Glassboro, and then Johns Hopkins, and you get into TCNJ. And then two big NJAC matchups, Christopher Newport on homecoming, and then Salisbury, again, the top two teams in this NJAC. Then you close it out, Montclair State, Kane, and then the final game, William Patterson here at home. Your first NJAC matchup is not until October, which we don't always see that too often if you're the prop. You usually see an NJAC matchup pretty much in the end of the September, around September 30th on homecoming weekend. Last year, it was Salisbury. And so Parigi will punt this one away. Stevenson going to field it at about the 25. 
Frazier gets the punt off, spiraling. And fielded inside the 20 yard line there by Justin Rutkowski, senior defensive back. Makes the fair catch, and they will mark the ball at the 19 yard line. That's where the Mustangs will start as the first quarter clock winds down, and we're on to the second here as the sun starts to settle down here in Glassboro. And really kind of an interesting scenario, guys, obviously with the game here on August 31st. Pretty, uh, pretty warm out at kickoff, just a touch under 80 degrees and now settling into the low 70s, but obviously gonna be one of the warmer games that Rowan plays all year as we move into October and November. Gonna have to get adjusted to those cold, windy nights here in Glassboro and beyond, of course. Guys, let's enjoy this warm weather while it lasts. <laughs> yes, I, I agree wholeheartedly. Not gonna get too many more nights like this in the borough as the classes start up next Tuesday. Don't wanna remind every everybody, but not that far away as uh, the new school year gets underway. And so here comes Nair Wilson and this Stevenson offense. Wilson, the junior standing five foot 10 and listed officially at 235 pounds. So he can certainly put his shoulder down as here's a pitch to Martez and Martez gonna take this one just across the 30 and hit by multiple Rowan defenders at the 31 yard line. And Brody Colbert was one of the guys in there on the stop and uh, some extracurriculars after the play. But nonetheless, a 12 yard run there for Martez on the pitch play will net Stevenson a first down. Yeah, Marquez already six attempts here, 22 yards gained. And he's, he's really got good separation there, gets a first down and now uh, Stevenson trying to put a drive together to get on the board. Second first down of the game for the Mustangs. Here's the run inside zone give across the line and they're being wrapped up was number 21 Maurice Hammond with the carry and Eric Hill one of those big bodies up front for the props you're gonna see a lot of him number 93 number 55 in the middle Josh Ortiz and number 94 the big fella on the outside Ahmad Dant really making up a stout defensive front for the profs. Some movement up front from the profs, and they think that Stevenson were the ones that pit their head up first, and that is what the officials are going to say as well. Another false start against the Mustangs gonna knock them back five more yards. That was their fourth penalty tonight, and we're barely into the second quarter. Look guys, both teams are pointing there. For one second I thought it was Rowan, but my gut told me it was Stevenson. And so Hammond gonna stay out there as the back. And there's Wilson out of the shotgun. Dropping back, pressure comes as he throws and that pass incomplete. As it was Ahmad Dan off the edge, sticking his hand up, making that throw tough for Wilson up the right sideline. And he was looking that time for Jaheim Henderson, the junior receiver, couldn't get it to him. Coverage in the secondary that time by Marlon Boston. And so now, with 13.33 left to go, it'll be third down and 13 here for the Mustangs. Three receivers split out and a trip set to the left. Wilson, with some more pressure, fires and he's got his man caught just shy of the 45 across midfield. It is brought in that time by Makai Walker, the sophomore from Gaithersburg, Maryland. And Walker just found a soft spot in the defense, guys, as Wilson had some more pressure coming. It was kind of a throw that he looked like he made kind of while turning away that time with the hand in his face, but was able to hook up that time with Walker and a first down here for Stevenson. So they marked it at the row in 47. Wilson gonna throw it down up the left side and was looking for Henderson, but good coverage. Again, defensively, Rowan in the secondary, making it tough that time. And 
be second down. A.J. Turvin was all over Henderson that time. A.J. Turvin, one of the real, um, you know, veteran leaders in the secondary. Turvin, a senior out of Secaucus. Curry made a tip where if he didn't have that tip, maybe it would have been caught by Stevenson. Wilson dropping back, a lot of pressure coming. They flip it out on a scream here to Martez, and Martez is gonna have first down yardage, as he is gonna be marked down just at about the 35. And so he goes for 12 there on second down, and now Wilson in this offense, especially the passing game guys, getting into a bit of a rhythm, as you know, mark that down now is the fifth completion for Wilson. Catch made by Martez, and a first down and once again for the Mustangs here on this drive, moving the chains for the second time. 12 and a half to go here in the half. Rowan pitching a shutout here in the early going, 10 nothing props. As now the div will go to Martez, and Martez has had some good runs here early on in this one, is going to get across the 35. Eric Hill making the stop defensively for Rowan as he flies over to the prop sideline. He's got a shoulder pad coming loose and he'll uh, get some help over there from his teammates. And so he picks up six yards there. He'll make it second and four. As the ball marked right at the 30 yard line. There's Wilson from the gun. Martez to his right. They fake the handoff this time and a quick hitter over the middle is caught Dorman with another catch. He's really been their featured guy through the air to this point. Was their leading receiver last season. And so that'll be a first down as Stevenson now moves to the Profs 25 yard line. Yeah, they've been marching down the field. They've been really doing Walker, Gorman, Marquez, and Wilson is dialed in again. His first collegiate start here tonight. He's looking to get it together. And again, we're only in the second quarter. He's got plenty of time. And he's got to march back from a 10-0 deficit here. And now Wilson, he's, oh, here's, one. here's Wilson with an empty backfield, gonna take it himself, little QB power up the middle, and he is gonna get close to the 15 yard line. And so a pick up of nine there for Wilson on first down, make it second down and short here for Stevenson. And Wilson tonight, hey, he's, he's been a dual threat quarterback, the second attempt rush, and now has 10 yards on the ground. He picks up seven as they mark him at the 18 yard line. Second and three, Martez back into the game to the right of Wilson here and the run does go to him. Martez keeps the ledge turning. So Vlad will come in, was being wrapped up that time by number 34 and Rocabaldo and we'll see what the flag is here towards the prof sideline. The senior out of summit and He's had 10 tackles last year, and look, he's gonna take a step up this year. They're expecting him to, and tell you, he has. And so the penalty against the profs here defensively. After the run by Martez, this is gonna scoop Stevenson all the way up inside the Rowan 10 yard line. They move him up to the six, where it'll be first down and goal here for the Mustangs, trying to get on the board for the first time in this ball game. It's the fourth penalty on Rowan tonight, and that is a key penalty for Stevenson. We could be talking about this, get, have penalty in the second half if, if it's a close game, but we'll see what Rowan has to do here. Martez shuffling over to the right of Wilson. They give it to Martez as he breaks across the five and is dragged down there. Maybe got a yard or two on the carry. It'll be second and goal. Now we move inside, 10 minutes remaining in this first half. Rowan with a 10 point lead. And so they march it at the three. Pick above three there for Martez on the run. And second and goal here for Wilson. And they go right back to Martez, Martez. Not going to get much. A little push at the end. Maybe gets him to the two. As he was churning just to really stay at the line of scrimmage there. Rowan again defensively up front. Has done a very good job. Martez has broken a couple of runs, guys. 
He has, and Marquez tonight, 11 attempts, 35 rushing yards. Good start for Stevenson. Yeah, and Hill and Ortiz up front of the de defensive line for the Profs. They're two guys to look out for in, in his last couple of plays here for Marquez. Hasn't, hasn't gotten through. He's breaking some tackles. He's got a good amount of yards, and he's looking to keep turning, as, as Aaron said, and again, they're inside the five-yard line here trying to score. Now third down and goal from the three. As it'll be a play action here and slipping out into the flat to the left and finding his way into the end zone for the touchdown for Stevenson, the tight end, Tyler Blake on the little three yard pass to the flat there from Wilson. Stevenson able to get on the board for six. Blake wide open to the left. Last season he had 10 receptions for a little over 150 yards and two touchdowns. He's already got halfway to his touchdown point last year. Yeah, that way, just an easy play on the left side, as, you, as Aaron said, it's, it's gotta, gotta be something that you can uh, make up for on the other side with the cross going on offense through Natty, and they get on the board. Now it's possibly a 10-7 game, and really got uh, more offense to put out, and the more defensive stats you're gonna need to win this game. Brody Campbell, senior kicker on for the extra point, handling punting duties as well tonight for the Mustangs, and his extra point is up and good. So count the PAT, make it 10-7 rowing in front with a couple tits over nine minutes left to go here in this first half. And guys, uh, we've seen a theme from both sides. The execution from both sides has been here, sometimes it hasn't. It's been penalties that's helped out both teams uh, here in the early going. And that's kind of to be expected, right? First game of the year, a little sloppy and both teams have kind of benefited from that. And you, you mentioned key word penalties. Both teams combined on has nine penalties, and we're not even away from the first half. The sloppiness needs to be taken away by Roan, and of course, Stevenson. Yeah, it started off, I mean, again, the initial kickoff where uh, Stevenson bobbles it, the Profs get, and even on the, they get a penalty even on, the, on the, the kickoff. I mean, it was off the jump, and we've seen, again, both teams capitalize on the turnovers, and we've seen kind of Wilson and the, the Mustangs kind of find a groove, and the Profs even helped them out with that penalty, and then they got that touchdown, obviously to the tight end. Teron Lewis, as well as Isaac John Baptiste are the two return men deep back for Rowan. As the kick now to be sent away on the side of Stevenson. And it is taken here by John Baptiste. Here he comes, returning up the middle, now moving towards the Stevenson sideline up the right side. And now we've got some uh, chirping here from both sides after the play. John Baptiste wrapped up just short of the 25. And so that's where the props will begin. This drive here with 8.55 left to go in the half. This is a drive, guys, where if they can burn four or five minutes, you know, go up by two scores again, heading in to the locker room for the uh, obviously second half. And they will receive the second half kickoff as well. Now, Aaron, that would be ideal, but they've been stopping James Farrah tonight. Only has three rushing yards with five attempts, but this Stevenson D-line has been great at stopping their run, but that's what they're going to have to do. If Roe can run the ball, they will drain that clock out. Carlstrom in motion left to right, or right to left, I should say. The give is to Farrah out to the right side, moving towards the 30 as he gets up across the third uh, 25. Drive starting on the 22 for the Profs. Pick up of six there from Farah. And now second and four coming up. Yeah, Farah's best run of the night right there. A good five, six yards. And as Sam was pointing out, I mean, again, they've had the answer, but Brunati so far, he's five for seven in the past game, 43 yards. And Carlson's been his main man so far. And I'm assuming that connection's gonna happen a lot more tonight, guys. Of course, it's, it, that's gonna be the connection all season long. Brunati with Carlstrom coming across. They fake the give to him. Brunati keeping it himself. And did get much there on the run. And actually, it looks like they'll push him back a yard to the 27. And that'll make it third and five here for the Profs. And a dangerous spot where if you're going to be forced to punt and Stevenson gets the ball with maybe six minutes or so before half, they could have a drive where they try and chew some clock up. So a bit third down here for the Profs. Brunati with Farrah to his left, dropping back. Now the pressure comes, he fires deep to the right and into no man's land. 
And now a flag is gonna fly at about the 45 on the side of Rowan. Carlstrom was being held as he was the closest props receiver to that ball. And this could be a penalty here on the back end against Stevenson that is gonna be another really costly one as we wait for the call. But expecting a pass interference call as Carlstrom was being wrapped up by really multiple Stevenson defenders. I think they're gonna call it on Marvin Massa. Look, Massa, last year, 28 tackles and one interception, and he looked like he was grabbing it from Arab distance. And it is against Massa, now they get him for holding, and the props are gonna get bumped up here. Now to their own 37, where they'll have a fresh set of downs. Manasseh had the break coverage down in the red zone early on in the first quarter against Corey Gordon on Rowan's opening drive. We had a pass break up, that time called for the holding. And now Rowan back to work on the ground with Farah churning the ledge across the 40. Flag is out on the far side. The laundry sitting just beyond the Stevenson sideline. And this is going to go against the profs here. And so you can cancel out that run by Farah. Who, if it did stand, guys, that's another five, six yards for him there on the ground. So I want to see James Farah start to get going a little bit. Of course, you know, he's your captain. He's the focal point of this offense, but we thought it'd be a little more tonight so far. And there's a false start against the defense. So I stand corrected. Stevenson jumping early that time. And Rowan going to get helped out once again, as that will be the seventh penalty against the Mustangs here so far in the first half. Rowan has been penalized four times, giving up 22 yards there. Five more yards the profs will earn here off that penalty. So now 58 yards in penalties against Stevenson. As you're on first and five, a deep shot. And a catch is made by Carlstrom up the far sideline, but he was out of bounds when he brought it in. What a catch from Carlstrom. As you saw that time, Brunati was looking deep the whole way. And you can already see that connection between him and Carlstrom really starting to come into fruition as now we're gonna have a holding call against the profs. So even if that was attacked by Carlstrom, it would not have stood. Rowan did get knocked back five, uh, 10 yards here to their own 32. So another penalty. You just hate to see that. And penalties up the galore for both teams. And tonight, that's Rowan's sixth penalty. And even though that was an incompletion from Bernardi to Carlstrom, you have to imagine we're gonna be calling those two names together all season long. And so now, First and 15, Profs at their own 32, 706 left to go here in the half. Rowan leads it 10-7. Brunati back to pass on first down. They just flip it out here into the flat. Farah with a nice move to evade one defender as he gets to the 35. He'll pick up three. And it'll be second down and 13 now for the Profs at their own 35. Another completion there for Brunati. As he's now seven of his first nine through the air, guys. Very efficient. Very efficient tonight. Just passing 50 yards passing on the night. You know, you're gonna have, as we said earlier, you're gonna have a little rough patches. Your first career start, but Brunati is showing that he can handle the big stage. Brunati back out of the gun here. We'll take the snap. They go to Farah. Farah across the 35, just barely to about the 36. A yard on the run there for the Profs captain. And now it'll be third down and 11 from the 36. Profs with uh, a big play on third down last time. Got that pass interference call. And now they'll need 11 yards, aiming to get to the 47. Here on the 36, four wide receivers set. Here for Brunati, Karlstrom is out to his left. They fire it to the right side. Farah in the flat. Going to turn up field. Get pushed into the Stevenson bench. Right back up for James Farah. Before he can cross the 45. Shoved out at about the 44. They call it officially the 43. So seven yards there on the pickup. It'll be fourth and short for the profs. But Jay Forsey going to do the smart thing here and punt it away with Peter Parigi. You have to punt here. It's a pretty long field goal, a little 60 plus. <laughs> but uh, you do have the wind. That, that does uh, help. 
Parisi will punt it. And it's a good one. It will bounce and actually take the Stevenson bounce. Rowan will down it at the Mustangs 32 yard line and that's where they will have 5.04 left in the half to play with trailing 10-7. We figured it would be a close one guys. Obviously we talked about these two teams both coming off very successful years last year and you know it, it's pretty interesting right we talked about Rowan uh, a team that put up 26 points a game last year second in total yards in the end jack last year very good offensive team and we said focal point was going to be the run game Stevenson their strength on defense is stopping the run and so we've kind of seen the two strengths collide here in what is a 10 to 7 game Martez up the middle as there was a two running back set there around Niger Wilson. They go to Elijah Marquez, and Marquez can get his way to the 38 yard line. Gain of seven there. And second and three for the Mustangs. Just passing four yards on the night. So both teams running back, leading backs are 30 plus yards. Another two running back set for Marquez. Here comes the man in motion across in Matai Walker. And they give it again to Martez. Martez gonna turn up the right side, break midfield, and it's tripped up at the Profs 47. A big game there, 15 yard run for Martez, who's really starting to get it going on the ground. As he's now up over 50 yards here in the first half. First down for Stevenson as they get to the Rowan 47 yard line. First and 10 here, 405 to play in this first half. Now Wilson dropping back on first down, firing across the middle, pass is caught. Number three, Josh Dodd, the junior, finding a spot there in the Rowan coverage. And that's another first down. As they go from the 47 to the 34, 13 yard completion there, Wilson to Dodd. Clock keeps on moving, but Stevenson now threatening guys, moving towards the Rowan red zone at their 34. They are taking their time tonight. Wilson, play action, dropping back, clean pocket, fires deep, and he's got a man. It is caught by Gorman inside the 15, and a big hit on the back end of that play by A.J. Curvin, but not before Gorman gets down to the Profs 13-yard line, a 21-yard gain on the completion, and that'll make it first and 10 for Stevenson now inside of the Profs red zone. The approach three minutes left here in the corner. Wilson. The give is to Martez, and Martez really dies, has a knack for not going down on first contact. It's another run where he's able to make it up into the second level, and he'll pick up five, make it second and five from the Prof eight yard line. And last time Stevenson was in the red zone, he had the touchdown to Blake and he was wide open for three, so you have to imagine they're gonna wanna look for Blake again for two for two in the red zone. Martez, 14 carries, 62 yards now on the ground, up over four and a half yards per carry. So Wilson looking over to the sideline, getting the call now, dropping back into the shotgun with Wilson to his left. Here on second and five from the eight yard line, Martez with the give as he tumbles forward across the five yard line. We'll see where they mark him down. And it is third down still, so they're gonna put him at the four. It's third down and one at the Profs four yard line. You have to imagine they're just gonna keep running with Marquez. It works, keep on going if you're Stevenson. But if you're Rowan, rush the rusher. And the give is to Marquez, and he goes up the middle, untouched into the end zone. Touchdown Stevenson and the Mustangs take the lead here late in the first half they go up 13 10 a minute 52 left and it was all elijah martez there on the drive mixed in with a couple of big completions from wilson hitting his guys in dodd and gorman just a, a masterful offensive drive there by stevenson guys to put up six yeah wilson i mean the, uh, the pocket has not collapsed really at all tonight and he's been really dealing and obviously marquez now 15 rushes for 70 yards and now one touchdown i mean this team has gotten on the board Really a good uh, fishing clip in the second quarter and they're looking to keep it going. 
Campbell with the PAT, up and good. And that makes it 14-10, Stevenson in front. So now Rowan Dye's gonna have to enter the two minute drill. Minute 52 left, you need points before the half. They will receive the second half kickoff, but still you, you'd like to get one back here if you're Jay Corsi before you head into the locker room. Stevenson leading this one 14-10. If you're wrong, look, that missed field goal in the first quarter, well, that could be pivotal now, which they would only be down by one. And if you get a field goal here, it'd be a two-point lead. Yeah, something to look at. But again, really, we've seen Bernardi. He's kind of shined tonight. The fair on the opposite end kind of hasn't got enough, a lot of yards that we expected. But on the opposite end, Marquez is kind of, really, as you said, Aaron, he doesn't go down easy. And he's broke a couple tackles here with ease. And now the cross will get the ball back here with the minute 52. Zachary Roosh, the kicker for Stevenson, will wind up and boot this one again, uh, boot this one away. And this time it'll land in between Lewis and Jean Baptiste. And Rowan gonna start what could perhaps be their final drive of this half at their own 25 yard line. First and 10 for Noah Brunati and company. Brunati out of Lacey Township High School where in his senior season, threw for over a thousand yards. He was a guy who was a three-year starter there at Lacey Township, and obviously, like we talked about, stepping in for the two-year starter here with the Profs and Mike Husney. So Rowan down 14-10. Two-minute drill intact here. And on the sweep play, they will hand it off to Denden. Denden will pick up a couple here as he moves towards the prof sideline. Clock will continue to roll. Again, Rowan did burn a couple of their timeouts early in the half, so they've only got one remaining. So now 90 seconds to go in the half. Pickup of two officially for Denden on that jet sweep. Rowan seemingly not in much of a hurry here to get this next playoff. We're down to a minute 15 now. Trip set to the right of Brunati. James Farah in the backfield to his right as well. They fake the div to Farah. The throw is low on the screen pass out to the right, and it's incomplete as it hits the turf. Well, I was looking that time over for Shane Martin. The sophomore receiver was in the vicinity. Jade Schick as well. And so a failed screen play there from Rowan now gives them a minute and six seconds to work with. Third down and eight on their own 27. We'll see if they just hand it off or if they try to move the chains here. Stevenson does have all three timeouts left. And it will be a div. Farrow goes up the middle. He's got a first down and more to the 40-yard line. And with a minute left, the clock will stop after the first down. Pick up for Farah. And now it'll tick down once again. So you have to imagine here, with less than a minute left, they're going to have to go to the hurry up offense, and they're going to have to pass to Carlstrom. 45 seconds, 13 yard run there for Farah. Now Brunati drops back, fires, and that ball is. Not sure what they're gonna rule in a catcher, an interception, and it is a completion. Denton makes the catch as he was wrapped up there. Both guys, him and Brian Kelly, the sophomore defensive back for Stevenson. Looks like they both had to throw that ball, guys, but they credit Denton with the catch. Now 30 seconds to go. To the Stevenson 30, they go right back to Denton, and the ball hits off his hands. He was able, nearly able to recover there, and, catch it on the deflection moving towards the end zone but an incomplete pass will bring up second down and so by the way that last pass a 30 yard completion from Brunati to Denman that time incomplete 24 seconds remaining in the half second and 10. That was the second time Denman was open for a wide open pass it did not make the touchdown happen. Brunati 8 of 12 83 yards 
Now the divots to Farah up the middle. He breaks through, lowers his helmet, and is going to push towards the 15. He's brought down at the 16-yard line. 17 seconds left to go. The first down will stop the clock. They mark Farah officially at the 18, so a gain of 12. 17 seconds left to play. Farah now 10 rushes for 47 yards. Clock going to begin to tick here any moment as Rowan sends their offense back out onto the field. Still trying to set the ball here, the officials. Stevenson making some defensive changes as well. That single high safety, now they have five linebackers lined up. Dropping back, Brunati feeling the pressure from his backside, has to roll out, and he's going to take the sack in a situation where he really could not afford to do that. He's brought down at about the 26. It'll be an eight-yard loss, and that will force Jay Corsi to burn his final timeout here. And with six seconds left, guys, it would be about a 43, 44-yard field goal here for um, Batten at this point. And it's not an easy field goal. And so we'll see what the decision is going to be from the sideline here with Jay Corsi. Connor Batten, the junior, is not going to go out there. It looks like Rowan will keep their offense on the field. With seven seconds left, they add a tick. And so they, it looks like just a, a shot to the end zone here, guys. And if you're going to have a shot to the end zone, I think you got to go with Carlstrom. He's been on fire tonight. He's been the boss leading the receiver. Who else would you go to? Yeah, most likely you go to Carlstrom. Again, uh, Sam pointed out, Degnan's dropped two passes. That last one would have been a for sure touchdown. And the opposite end, Demetrius Sally, his fourth tackle and his first sack of the night. Big play to blow up Bernardi's offense there. Receivers out there on the field for the profs. You've got Shane Martin, Corey Gordon, Jake Schick out there, as well as Kevin Denden. James Farah in the backfield, and now a timeout on the side of Stevenson. So Terry Carlstrom not lined up out there for that play, at least that time for the profs. And we'll see if the same person that will go back out there after the timeout. You have to imagine they're gonna go with the same plays they're going before. They're maybe trying to get them off for a hard cap to get five extra yards. Definitely a possibility again. I mean, Degnan, he has 34 yards. Hallstrom has 33. Either way, you just gotta go try to go for the end zone here. Seven seconds left, you're down four. And again, you, you kind of there's kind of wish you would have situations you've had so far in these past couple of drives. And, Got to capitalize here to close out the half. And then again, you get that kickoff to start of the second half. So and at least getting three would, would be a big deal here. Guys, I'm looking at the sideline right now for the props, and I think I see Terry Carlstrom down there. Not in uniform, however. It looks like he's got his pads off. And so perhaps was banged up on, on one of those plays. No Carlstrom back out there on the field for the props. And so that's a situation to monitor if he may be out the rest of this ball game. But the same group of receivers out there for the props, Schick with Denon, Gordon as well. And the fourth wide receiver is Shane Martin. James Farrow, the running back to the left of Noah Brunati here with seven seconds left to go. Rowan at the Stevenson 26. Brunati drops back, fires to the sideline, and it's incomplete. Three seconds remaining in the half. It'll be third down and 18. You have to imagine Rowan bringing up the field goal unit here with three seconds to go I'm in not the sure. first half. I think they're gonna sit out there with the offense now truly you need a, a shot to the end zone as Stevenson gonna back up into seemingly what is their prevent defense. You got three DBs right at the goal line. Bernardi drops back, he's got a lot of time to throw, looks for the end zone, and it's caught! Oh my, what a catch by Jake Schick for the touchdown! Schick with a touchdown on the left side. What a pass by Brunati, put it in, in the right spot for his hands, and the boss lead by two. Jake Schick with two Stevenson defenders all over him, goes up and makes the catch. Noah Brunati is second touchdown pass of the half, and Rowan with the extra point up and good from Connor Batten, takes a 17 to 14 lead into the halftime break. Stevenson, 
the lone passing touchdown in the half for Brunati right at the end as the clock hit zero. Both teams gonna jog off the field now, but guys, what a first half as, wait a second, now the officials discussing something. Stevenson players up in their faces with a, with a flag down. Don't think it'll impact the second half kickoff, although it might, as both teams now are gonna head back to the locker rooms. We'll wait on the call from the officials, but what a play there, guys, to end the half. What a throw by Brunati right on the money, and Shit going up to make the catch. Jade Shit is a big fella, 6'5", 205 from that wide receiver spot. Really that true X guy, and he showed why right there with that leaping touchdown draft. And Shit could be Rowan's. And so, penalties are gonna go against Stevenson, and they will surrender more yards here on the second half kickoff as the profs will receive that second half kickoff. They lead it 17 to 14 right now, guys, and really what a first half. What a first career half for Noah Brunati under center for the profs. Ultra efficient, nine of 14 for over 100 yards and a touchdown in that first half. The Brown game started the year going as well with James Fair. Overall, gotta be pleasantly surprised if you're Jay and Corsi considering um, kind of all the antics that were going on early in the half. Um, you obviously lose Brad Small um, to that bad injury that obviously we're gonna keep him in our prayers, of course. A, a little bit of a rough patch for Rowan. They get the mistake on the opening kickoff. They only settle for three and they actually end up missing the field goal. But they bounce back from adversity and they take a three point lead into the locker room. You bounce back from adversity coming out in the second half. Look, they're gonna have to keep on with their run game. Look, Farrer has been heating up in the second quarter. Was only had 15 rushing yards, but he finishes with 30 plus. Have to imagine Farrer's gonna have a monster second half. And Brunati, who was a little rusty in the first half too. Look, second quarter, he started to heat up. He finds not his groove. Yeah, I mean, and you talk about Schick, that's his first career touchdown with the profs. I mean, first reception of the night as well. I mean, he, great spot, back corner of the end zone, play, great placement from uh, Brunati there. And Brunati has been really complete. I mean, a couple of drop passes from Degnan, really, so really four incompletions, two of them not really his fault. And you got to really think about second half. Again, you're getting the kickoff. You have a big spot here to capitalize. I mean, we've talked about the drops. We've talked about the penalties. And it's been really kind of a thing that, Again, the rushing game, Marquez on the opposite side has been a monster in this game. He's breaking every tackle he's really been able to see. And we got to, obviously, as the profs, again, Ortiz and Hill out front, they've been trying to get to the quarterback. Wilson hasn't got sacked tonight. Brunati's gotten sacked just on that drive right there. But Brunati has been uh, kind of in his own tonight. And same with Wilson. So we should be in for a good second half. Profs taking a three-point lead into the locker room here in their season opener against the Stevenson Mustangs. Here on Rowan Athletics, Aaron Hook, Sam Prince, and Justin Locke will be back for second half action. We'll take a break, and we'll be back for kickoff.
one. And we're back here at Coach Richard Wacker Stadium in Glassboro, New Jersey. Sun is starting to set. Second half set to get underway momentarily. Aaron Hood, Sam Prince, Justin Locke with you here on Rowan Athletics. Thank you all for tuning in. Rowan football season opener. They lead it 17-14 at the break. Guys, pretty exciting first half. We talked about two teams, Rowan and Stevenson, out of the Middle Atlantic Conference. Two teams that had really good years last year. Stevenson finishing third in their conference, eight wins. Rowan, seven and three last year, finishing right at the top of the end jack in the three spot. We expected this to be a back and forth matchup, but that's exactly what we got in that first half, guys. That's exactly what we got. And I was expecting, personally, a lower scoring matchup, but hey, Rowan still leads, so it's all good. But one marker, I'm gonna mark the first drive for Rowan. They missed a field goal. Yes, they are still winning by two. But that could be a game changer come later in this game. A lot of penalties as well, Justin, in that first half. Yeah, I mean, again, some are inexcusable. I mean, again, a lot of times the Mustangs got to stop on the cross, but again, it was called back, and that resulted in a, a score either the field goal or the touchdown, and it's going to be uh, something to look forward to in this game. And so second half kick. Moments away, Rowan to receive the second half kickoff, as Justin just talked about, and Sam as well, that opening kickoff guys uh, boxed muffed by Dylan Johnson of Stevenson and Rowan was able to jump on the ball set up that first drive inside their own 10 yard line unfortunately they did come away empty handed they still lead it 17 14 as getting ready to send it away for the Mustangs will be number 84 and Zachary Roos, the junior. Rowan, two men back deep to return in Karan Lewis and Isaac Jean Baptiste. Kitches a line drive, couple of bounces and picked up here by Jean Baptiste. He'll cut it back up the middle, breaking the 50. Now cutting it back to the 40. He's got room up the sideline, 30, 25. And that's where he shoved out of bounds where a couple of flags fly, we'll see. Most likely some blocks in the back there, but wow, what a return by Isaac Jean Baptiste. What a way to open up the second half for the props. Great way to open up the second half. You just love it when your kickoff man goes all the way into opponent territory and the first play of the second half coming off of the Jake Size touchdown reception with three seconds to go in the first half. Yeah, great return there. I mean, again, he got through the middle. It's a flag on the play, though. So there will be a hold against Rowan. And that will cost them some yardage, but nonetheless, a great return by Gene Baptiste. And they, the props, that is, are going to start inside of Stevenson territory here to open up the second half. They'll have it at the Mustang 47-yard line. And here comes... Noah Brunati and this offense. Brunati, the true sophomore, making his first career start tonight. 9 of 14, 109 yards, a touchdown, no interceptions in that first half. Pretty good. James Farah, the running back to his right. And now a little flea flicker play as they hand it off to number 22 in Alfredo Gonzalez. And the throw out to the left side. Knocked down there right at the 50. So a little bit of a trick play there from Rowan. Not the result they wanted, but they do pick up yardage. No, not the result that they wanted, but it's going to be... Braden Davis was the one who uh, got the ball that time. I'm sorry. So it's okay. It's okay, Aaron. <laughs> As I was finishing my sentence, it's going to be coming to us. Maybe Rowan's going to have a couple trick plays up their sleeve. And they give it that time to Davis, who is listed as a quarterback, a freshman. Drop back to pass that time. Alfredo Gonzalez, the other 22 for this props team, a defensive back. And now Brunati taking the snap with time to throw, looking deep, and nobody home there. Nearest prof was Kevin Denman, who in that first half, two catches for 34 yards. And that incompletion will make it third and 15 here for the profs 
at the Stevenson 48 yard line. So on the run a moment ago um, by Davis, only a yard there. So third and 15, just shy of midfield here for Brunati. And the prof strip set out to the right in the slot out to the right is Shane Martin, the wide receiver, and the div is to James Farah. Farah trying to get to midfield, diving near the sideline, and be tripped up just short. Maybe a yard on the day in there for Farah, not much. And the Profs will go three and out here to open up the second half. Yeah, I mean, it's been, it wasn't a good uh, drive there from the Profs. I mean, we've seen a lot of that rushing defense here from Mustangs. They've been on top of everything, and they're going to get this ball back here with 13-26 and plenty of game to go here, and they're down only three. Peter Parigi will kick it away. Two men back deep to receive for Stevenson. A wobbling kick headed towards the Rowan sideline. Good punt by Parigi. Be downed out of bounds around the 15-yard line. And Stevenson will officially begin at their own 16-yard line. So Rowan, a nice job of flipping field position there. And this Mustangs team, guys, that until that final drive of the half really didn't get much going offensively. But then we saw um, Nair Wilson really try to open up the pass game, some big completions, and a lot of big games on the ground as well for Elijah Marquez, the sophomore running back out of Manalapin, New Jersey, who has really given Rowan some fits. 15 carries, 70 yards on the ground, and a touchdown for Marquez to this point, and he will get... The carry on the opening play of the half for Stevenson and doing what he does best, guys. We've seen a lot of this, just not going down on first contact, keeping the legs churning. And this time, Martez is gonna work it up all the way to the 25, a nine yard gain on first down will be second and one. Martez tonight, 70 plus rushing yards. Am and I with 17 attempts. He's been the lead rusher for both teams tonight. Now Wilson. Here with the give again to Martez, and this time he stood up by the Rowan front as they get in there and make a play. Number 96 in Mitchell Masiolik in there for the Profs. Eric Hill and on the stop as well. And so no date on the play. They make it third down. Oh no, first down, they will award the yardage there to Martez. So just a yard there on the run for Martez, but it's all he needed, he gets the 26, so first and 10. And they go right back to him. Martez to about the 30 for a four yard gain on first down, second and six. Yeah, second and six, but again, Martez, it's just around four yards uh, per attempt here. He's been doing it really on first, second, even on third down, he's converted and he's done it in a high clip. And uh, Wilson and Marquez have been the two uh, standouts here for Mustangs. Joe rocked the ball though, the linebacker with the tackle that time. Now Wilson on second down, stepping up and he's gonna be surrounded and hit hard at the end of the play as Rocaballo gets to him there, lowers his shoulder and Mates Wilson pay for stepping up out of the pocket there. He is able to gain three yards on the scramble. And so that means it's gonna be third and three here for Stevenson at their own 34 yard line. They actually bump him up a yard to the 34. So now call it third and two officially as four minutes have gone by here in the second half. Roman defensively doing some shuffling here. The four man front and the two safeties deep. They'll line up in man coverage here with Wilson out of the shotgun. Man comes in motion left to right. They fake the handoff. He rolls right, Dan right on his neck. He fires to the right side and open once again with the catch is Pat Gorman for the first down right in front of the Stevenson sideline. Gorman tonight, who's been the leading receiver for Stevenson. Five reception, 40 plus receiving yard. Look, your longest 21 yards. He's been a threat who Rowan just can't cover. Yeah, I mean, we've seen it right there. Gorman on the outside, near the outside of the numbers on the far sideline, makes a great catch and gets the first down. And Mustangs are rolling through this drive so far. Steven Smothers was Stevenson's 
leading receiver last year, 65 catches for 630 yards. First down here right at midfield for Wilson who steps up, somehow avoids the sack, goes to the right side and is eventually there, tripped up with the flag down. But for Rowan, wrapping up the ankles that time was Nick Cerulli out near the Mustang sideline. And Stevenson will be pushed back regardless here with the flag in the backfield. And it will go there against the Mustangs, a holding call, and they'll get it on Parker or Clendenin. Clendenin, the junior right tackle. And so again, big theme in the first half, guys. Both sides committing a lot of penalties, especially Stevenson, as with that call, that's gonna be the ninth time tonight they've been penalized, and so far it's cost them over 80 yards. Rowan has capitalized in a big way. Now Wilson on first and 20. Stevenson backed up to their own 40. A flag will come after the incompletion. And with his hands up in the air, wondering about that call is Jason Blanks on the far side and wonder if we've got a holding coming in the secondary there. Laundry out on the field. We'll wait for the official's call. And it is a pass interference call against Blaine's. And so now moving up. It looks like they actually changed the call to Nick Cerulli, the linebacker who was in coverage that time. First down here for Stevenson, they move him up. First and 10 from their own 45, Marquez. On the carry, breaks midfield, working towards the Rowan 45. We'll get to the 46, and it's a good game for Marquez. He'll pick up nine. That makes it second and one. So they mark it at the 47, actually. So give him eight. Second and three. On second three, Wilson, quick hitter, screen pass out to the left, caught by Gorman. And Gorman, right before he broke the 40, is hit out of bounds hard by John Perez, who's got some words for him after the play. And nonetheless, Gorman with another catch, guys. He's been active tonight, fifth catch for him. And that will move the chains again for Stevenson. Fifth catch, 50 yards on a night, halfway point to 100. He's been the guy who Wilson's been finding. Wilson now out of the shotgun, trip set to his right. He'll step up to the line, look for the call over from the sideline. And now Wilson with the div to Marquez. He goes right up the gut to about the 37, four yard gain there. And that'll make it second and six for Stevenson who in that last drive of the first half, guys, they really kind of mixed in the run and the pass. Doing a lot more of the same here, and they've been able to move the ball against this Rowan defense after really their first three drives of the day, and they couldn't get anything going offensively. Yeah, I mean, you talk about it, it's it's a mixture of Walker and Marquez and Wilson have been kind of the three pieces for this team, and they've done a great, great job at it. Marquez, great to tackle in the backfield as coming down trying to Get the tackle for loss was Joe Rockaball though, but Marquez able to bounce it to the outside. Marquez tonight nearing 100 yards rushing, probably most likely to get 100 rushing yards with more than halfway in the third quarter to go, and of course with the fourth quarter to go. Two yard gain for Marquez, up to 94 yards rushing in the contest. Stevenson at the row in 35, third down and four. For Nair Wilson who drops back with a clean pocket, time to throw, dumps it over the middle and across now the 25, close to the 20 with a first down reception. The catch is made that time by number 82, that's Kevin Smithson, the sophomore. And really guys, now Stevenson getting all of their receivers involved. We approach seven minutes to go in the half. First down, Mustangs, as they move to the Rowan 21-yard line. And now Wilson barking out calls, moving up to the line. I hear Wilson after that last completion, 13 of 18 through the air. For 100, 
and 28 yards for the touchdown and an interception. Here's Wilson dropping back. Again, time to throw. He fires, and it's broken up by Bryant. Just not the hand in there at the last second. Eric Bryant in coverage tonight, guys, has been sensational. Yes, he has been sensational. The 5-8 cornerback, look, who had a pick six opening play for Stevenson, took her to the house. So he's been all over the field tonight, and we're going to be calling his name a lot this year. Yeah, the second pass batted down by him tonight. Again, talk with the pick six. He's been that guy again. Right there, that would have been a good completion there to get into the red zone, but see what they can do. And now Wilson with the delayed handoff to Maurice Hammond. Hammond, that's just his second carry of the evening. And he's not going to get much. Hammond only getting back to the line of scrimmage there, guys. So now third down and 10 for the Mustangs at the Roman 21-yard line. If you're the, must, the Mustangs, I'm probably going to look for at Pat Gordon, who's been all over the field tonight. But you know who's been covering? Eric Bryant. Mustang six of nine on third downs tonight. Wilson out of the shotgun on third and 10. Rowan brings the pressure and the ball is batted at the line of scrimmage and it falls incomplete and the Profs get a big time third down stop and they will force Stevenson to attempt the field goal here with 5.59 left in the third. Yeah, AJ Curvin comes in there, bats the pass down. Just Wilson again. Probably the most pressure he's seen all night right there in that possession and good play by the Profs to prevent a touchdown from happening. So lining up for the field goal, 38 yarder here for Brody Campbell, the senior. Snap is down, the kick is up, and the kick is good. And so Campbell ties the game at 17. Although now the official's out onto the field with a flag down on the far side, you can barely see it. And it looks like it may have been on Stevenson. Let's see what the call is. Mustangs are heading over to the sideline, and so you'd figure probably against the profs. And we'll look for the call here. They haven't officially put the three up on the scoreboard yet. But when it does count, it will tie us up at 17 here late in this third quarter. And now we get the call. And there's an offside against Rowan. Field goal stands. And we've got a tie game, guys. And now this is really the most crucial drive of the ball game here for the Profs. You let Stevenson come out on their first drive of the half after you go three and out. Stevenson comes down, they get three points. And now you've got the rest of this quarter to try and execute here with Noah Bernani in the offense. Again, they've gotten James Farah going a little bit more here tonight. 10 carries, 35 yards for Farah. He just, to this point, they've needed a little bit more out of him. We'll see if they can get it here on this drive. They've featured Farah in the receiving game three times as well. Three catches, 16 yards. And so Rowan with their two return men back deep. Lewis and Jean Baptiste and Zachary Roos, the kickoff man for Stevenson, will hustle up and boot of the way. Another little bit of a live drive kick that sails over Jean Baptiste's head. He'll let it go and a touchback. Rowan will come out to their own 25 yard line with 5.54 to go in this third quarter. Second drive for Rowan tonight. And Rowan's probably going to come out pounding with Farrah tonight. 10 attempts, 35 yards. Long for 13. And he's been cooking up in the second quarter. He hasn't, they haven't really given him the ball yet with the first drive. The second drive, I can only imagine they're going to go pound the ball with Farrah. I mean, obviously you can go with Farrah, but they kind of mixed it up. And that's kind of what uh, has been working for the Mustangs. And he's got a penalty here. And we are going to redo the kickoff. Penalty that time charged against Stevenson. So they'll, they'll back him up to the 30, so they'll have less room. And 
Bruce will do it again. So again. Gene Baptiste and Lewis back to return it. It is Gene Baptiste who had that great return last time. He'll take it up the right side here and it's hit hard just before the 35. And the profs with pretty solid field position. They get helped out by uh, the five yards on that second kickoff. And they're going to start on their own 34 yard line. First and 10 for this Rowan offense and a tie ball game, 17 all, 5.48 left to go here in the prof season opener. Taking on the Stevenson Mustangs out of the Middle Atlantic Conference, eight wins for them last year, a program that's been very successful in recent years. Rowan, the seven wins last year, their most guys in nearly a decade, the most since 2014. Hand off. And that time, the game is to Jawan Hayes up the middle, and new quarterback into the game for that uh, that play there. And that is number 13, Tom Goldsboro, the sophomore, who was right there in the competition for the starting job with Brunati. So Goldsboro again, the quarterback. The man to his left is the running back, Andrew Corita. And over the middle, the pass goes from Goldsboro, and the pass is caught by Kevin Dednan. Catch made at the 47-yard line. 11-yard hook up there. First down yardage. Props will move the change as an injured Mustang. And around the 40 yard line, we'll stop play here. Five minutes on the dot to go, but interesting change here, guys, with Brunati playing all of that first half and the first drive of the second half. And now they insert Goldsboro, maybe to just see what he's got. Give him a shot here in a tie ball game. Five minutes left in the quarter to see if he can lead this offense down the field. Again, it was really an, an open competition. Goldsboro a sophomore, same thing with Brunati, two young guys. We're competing for that position, and Rowan might be in a position where they're still trying to figure out who their guy is going forward. You're right, Aaron and Ju Justin. Also, this is an open competition, as you just mentioned. Goldsboro come in. Why not give him a shot? Maybe they can go down the field with Gold Goldsboro. Yeah, I mean, you look at it, as uh, Aaron pointed out, 9 for 15 tonight, Brunati, 109 yards, one touchdown. And Goldsboro on his first throw, I mean, 1 for 1, 11 yards, and... Hope the player that was down for Mustangs is good and should be a, an interesting drive because again, as I said, this uh, quarterback situation isn't fully guaranteed to Goldsboro or Brunati. They're gonna have to fight for it and obviously the Profs are just trying to get a win regardless of who's out, out there for the field. Tyshawn Bookman is the running back to the left of Goldsboro. He ran for two yards on his first carry a couple plays ago and this time he'll spin over the 45 to about the 46 yard line. So not much doing there for the Profs on first down. No date on the play, second and 10. And so new quarterback, new running back here for the Profs. Second and 10, 420 left to go in the third. Goldsboro out of the gun. Two wide receivers out to his left. Low man on the right side. And a throw over the middle, caught. And again, it's Goldboro finding a man. And this time he's gonna hook up with the man who caught the touchdown earlier, Jake Shake. Shake over to the sideline, hobbling a little bit. And for Shake, it's his second catch. Obviously the 26 yard touchdown reception earlier. That's, that's the most famous catch up tonight. <laughs> This time a 10 yard reception from Goldsboro. And first and 10 now for the Profs. As they fade the give to Bookman, Goldsboro in trouble, spins out of the sack and he is tripped up. 
at the Stevenson 47, and so Rowan will lose four yards there. He is sacked, second and 15 coming up. They mark him at the 48 officially, and loss of five. You know, loss of five, the third, the second and 15 on the play for Rowan. You have to imagine Goldsbury is gonna come back, maybe a RPO pass, maybe. Is that what they did last That's time? That's what they're gonna go, RPO pass. Not quite sure who though. Fire it out left side quickly. The catch is made there by Denden. Denden, that's his fourth catch. He's now the leading receiver for Rowan. Four catches, 45 yards. Rowan does not get anything on that pass play there. Denden wrapped up right at the line of scrimmage. Third down and 15, guys, two and a half left to go here in the third for the Profs, and a big play coming up here, needing to convert. Rowan just three of nine on third downs here so far tonight. Third and 15, Goldsboro dropping bad, pressure comes immediately, he steps up and he's got room to run, cuts it back over the 40, down to about the 38. He'll get 10 yards, he'll still be five short. He does work it into Stevenson territory, and now Jay forsey has got a decision to make. You got the decision to make. And last time, they didn't go for the field goal. They got a touchdown. Will history re repeat himself? We'll have to wait and see. Looks like they're not going to send out the field goal unit. I mean, obviously, it's a good, decent kick here. But again, you're got a five, fourth and five here to pick opportunity and see what they can do with it to Goldsboro. Props at the Mustangs 37-yard line. Fourth down and five here for Goldsboro. Tyshawn Bookman to his left in the backfield. Three wide receivers split out wide. Denman in the slot to the right of Goldsboro and perhaps a bit of a bluff there on Jay Forsey's part trying to get Stevenson to jump off sides. He now burns his first time out of the second half. A minute 25 left in the third. And a real turning point in this game, guys, for Rowan. Looks like Jay Forsey is going to keep his offense out there on the field as James Farrer now comes out of the huddle. However, if Rowan doesn't convert here, Stevenson's going to get the ball near their own 40, entering the fourth corner in a tie ball game. And these last two drives for Stevenson have been very, very effective, go through the air and on the ground like we've, we've talked about. So could be the biggest play of the game so far tonight here for Rowan on fourth down and five. And Aaron, you mentioned Stevenson's last two drives effectively on the ground in the air, and it's the exact opposite for Rowan. It has not been effective at all. Yeah, I mean, you look in, Goldsboro, you have Goldsboro and uh, Bookman, two guys that were not really the starters in this, in this one, obviously Farah, and then you had uh, Brunati. So, but three for three so far is Goldsboro, 21 yards. So he's going to look for four for four here, or possible uh, six yard gain or five yard gain will give you the first down. Goldsboro back out there with Tyshawn Bookman, the running back. They split James Farah as a wide receiver, far out to the left. Corey Gordon, the man wide to the right, passes over the middle and nearly intercepted. Goldsboro that time looking for his tight end, John Scaliba, and it backfires, pass broke it up. And Stevenson will take over at their own 37 yard line, a minute 20 to go in this third quarter. And 17 all. Stevenson having great starting field position, you have to think. Their last two drives been extremely effective on the, in the air and on the ground. They could go three straight great drives and take the lead back from the props. Yeah, I like the aggressive from McCorsey there, but a tough pass, thank God, he wasn't uh, intercepted, but now Wilson has a good chance to keep his drive going here. Wilson evading the pressure outside of the pocket and is forced to just throw this one away. And so incomplete there on first down, second and 10 coming up. Stevenson officially at their own 38 yard line, minute 13 to go in this third quarter. Stevenson 16 first downs tonight. They've been pretty good on third down as well, five of 10. Here's Wilson, low snap. The pitch here goes out to the left with Martez and Martez Quickly wrapped up at about the 39. Only about a one yard day there on second down. It'll be third and long. 
Capsu pushed him to the 41. So a three yard gain for Marquez, third and seven for the Mustangs with under a minute now left to play in the third quarter. And if you're the, and you're, you're the boss, you stop the Mustangs here, that gamble doesn't seem like the biggest gamble in the world. But if not, it'll be the exact opposite. So here's Nair Wilson, 12 of 20 for 128 yards so far tonight. He'll loft one deep down the left sideline. And that ball is an incomplete pass as John Perez leaps up and mates the catch. Would have been an interception if he stayed inbound, but an incomplete pass works just as well for the Profs as they're gonna force Stevenson to punt the football right back to him. It's Kevin Dednan is back to receive the punt here for the Profs. He'll hang out at about the 25 yard line. And for the Profs going for that gamble on fourth down, not converting. And then Stevenson only getting one yard, now being forced to punt here. A little bit slow for the Profs. Let's see if that's getting any motivation for them. Dead then lets it take a couple of bounces. It's gonna trickle into Rowan territory, pretty deep into their territory. And gonna start this drive seemingly inside their own 20 yard line. By the way, that's Josh Dodd, the wide receiver who had a 13 yard catch earlier in the game who punted that ball away. So a great punt there by Dodd is going to pin Rowan inside their own 20 yard line. Final 18 seconds of this third quarter. Final 18 seconds left in this quarter. Goldschmidt is going to be the quarterback. Still, you know, you have Carlson most likely out for the rest of the game with a parent injury we're not quite sure about. So if you're the guy who we're looking towards, is going to be Kevin Nagandi. Yeah, Goldsboro, it's again, it's this time to kind of to shine. First game, first uh appearance, I should say. It's going to be a, a big one again in close game, 17 and 17, with just only 18 seconds left in this third quarter. Play goes right up the middle. James Farrow that time. A little, uh, little wildcat situation going on there. Takes the direct snap and goes right up the middle himself. Three yard pickup for Farah there. Rowan starting at their own 17. Farah getting to about the 19, picking up a couple of yards. And the clock winds down in the third quarter here in Glassboro. Rowan, season opener, taking on Stevenson here at Coach Richard Wacker Stadium. 17 all as we head to the fourth. Aaron Hood, Justin Lott, Sam Prince here on Rowan Athletics. Honestly, guys, I don't think we could have hoped for much better of a game at this point. 17 all heading into the fourth. Both these teams have kind of seemingly hit a rhythm offensively. Um, and so as we start this fourth quarter, just want to kind of pick your guys' brains. One thing you think Rowan's got to do to try and close this ball game out, if they had to pinpoint one thing. I think they got to be more effective in the air. I think it's really on the defensive side. I think, uh, again, getting to the quarterback, Wilson has really had maybe only two plays that one was batted down and uh, another one where he had to kind of force a play out. But besides that, he's kind of had all the time in the world to get these passes off. And we've seen that in the second half. We've seen that at the end of the first. And he's done a good job of it. And I think, uh, again, Marquez has been, and Wilson have been the two guys to uh, stop here on this uh, Mustang team. First play of this fourth quarter coming up. Rowan offense out there. I believe that's James Farah again about to take this direct snap. Man in motion is Denton. Now they hand it off to him on the sweep play. Denton out to the near side, and a helmet came off there for somebody. Denton is ripped down. And he's going to lose yardage there from the 19. He's pushed back to the 17. Loss of two. It's going to make it third and 10 for the Profs. And now Tommy Goldsboro back into the game. With James Farah to his right. Two receivers split out wide to the left. Corey Gordon, the nearest man on the bottom of your screen. Goldsboro handoff. Farah up the middle. He's got first down yardage across the 25 and down to the 27. A 10 yard run for Farah, and he's just out enough to move the chains. Farah now 12 rushes for 45 yards on the evening. And Farrah, who's been the foundation of his team these past couple years, who focal point in the tonight's offense, finally getting a groove going. 
It's a good second uh, longest rush here tonight from Farah, and again, he's just getting kind of in that groove that we, we know he could be in, and it's going to be a big leader in this uh, big quarter for the cross. Markham officially at the 28, first and 10. We'll go right back to Farah. He stood up right there, maybe got back to the line. They put him at the 29, it looks like. He'll get a yard. Second and nine here for the Prefs. 90 seconds gone by here in this fourth quarter. A crowd here at Wacker Stadium that is filled in quite nicely. Stevenson fans on the other side have done a pretty good job as well. Goldsboro now out of the gun, takes the snap, dropping back. Firing and passes broken up, incomplete. Looking for a chicane. And there is a flag coming out after. It's on that far side, and perhaps another pass interference call here going against Stevenson. And yet another penalty. No foul. They picked the flag up. And so instead, it'll just be third and nine here for the Crofts. So a false alarm. We all thought it was penalty to boot, but it wasn't. Yeah, Goldsboro kind of threw a pass, really with a sea of Mustang uh, uniforms, and it was not, uh, it was originally a flag thrown on, but not now, and now got a third and nine spot here for Goldsboro looking to get his first down. So third and nine here, 13 3 to go in the ball game. Rowan at their own 29, Goldsboro drops back. Pressure comes to see his rip to the ground, passes up in the air and intercepted. And here come the Mustangs the other way. Picked off by Clarence Travis, the junior linebacker, as Goldsboro took a hit as soon as he released that ball. It was wobbled up in the air. And Travis comes in, plucks it out of the air, and now Stevenson set up inside the Rowan 30-yard line right at the 20. And in the quarter break, I said, what the props would have to improve on his goal turns passing ability to get to the receiver as well. They're gonna have to throw on that. And for Travis, that was his first interception if in two years. So Yeah, Travis, yeah. I mean, eight tackles on the night, three solo, five assists, and out interception. He's having a great night for the Mustangs. Give up the middle. It's to Marquez. Marquez breaking the 15 down to the 14. Six yard gain. Second and four coming up here for Stevenson. And Marquez, 23 carries, 94 yards. Just over four per attempt and a touchdown in the game as well. Now Wilson, back to Marquez on the sweep play. Marquez, moving closer to the 10, put him at about the 12. He'll get a couple more there on second down. And he gets to the 13th, so only one. Third and three here. Officially third and two. Third and two here. You're going to have to imagine they're going to run it with Marquez. He's now got 24 rushes, over 100 yards, 103 now in the books for Marquez for the Mustangs. So third down and three here from the 12, Marquez again, and he is stuffed. The Rowan defensive front is there to make the stop. Flying in, Nick Cerulli got in on the tackle. And so it'll be fourth down here for the Mustangs, and out comes their field goal unit trying to take the lead as we approach 11 minutes left in the ball game. Brody Campbell. He tied the game up with a field goal in the third quarter, now looking to give Stevenson the lead. Snap is down, Campbell's kick is up, and it is right down the middle. And Stevenson takes the three-point lead. Guys, as we met, noted earlier in the broadcast, the Crofts missed an opening drive field goal. It would have been a tie game if they made it. Could be the game changer that we're talking about in the broadcast. Absolutely, I mean, and on offense, you got, got 10.58 left. It's going to be a big opportunity here 
for Goldsboro, most likely going to be out back out there. And again, you have time. You have to again at least tie the game, get a field goal. Or you, again, we talk about the same. You talked about that missed field goal early in the game by Batten. It's going to be something again if they walk away with a three point uh, three point loss. It's going to be something that going to look down the future and maybe could cost them a, a spot in the NJAC playoffs. Here comes Rowan out to receive the kick. Now trailing 20 to 17. Mustangs with the only six points of the half so far. A couple of field goals from Brody Campbell. Now Zach Roosh will boot it away. Gene Baptiste going to take it again. Here he comes, moving towards the Rowan sideline, trying to get to the 25. He's spun down there. Making the stop there on that return. Tyre Williams, senior defensive back on special teams there for Stevenson making the play. And Rowan to begin at their own 24. First and 10. First and 10 for Rowan. Three drives in this half, and it hasn't been all too great for them. And Noah Bernardi now back out there. As we saw a couple series with Tommy Goldsboro, three of six through that interception that ended Rowan's last drive. Bernardi back out there. And they give to Farah. Farah spins away out of the tackle, breaks it, and will get to the 30. A six yard run there for Farah. Up to 55 yards now in the contest. And the second down and three coming up here for the props as they officially give Farah seven yards there on the run. Yeah, 14th carry tonight for Farah. Got a less, lot less carries than Marquez on the opposite end, but he's still done his work, especially in the second half of this game, and going to need him again down three after that pick by Goldsboro. And then they go to Farah. Farah. Puts his head down, just needing a couple for the first down. Might be a yard shy or so. Looks like he will get to the 34, and that will be enough to move the chains. Three yards there for Farah on the carry. Another first down coming up for Rowan. First and 10 at their own 34. 9.50 to go here in the season opener for the Profs. Here comes Deglin in motion, left to right. Give us again to Ferry, he's able to bounce it to the outside, avoid going down early, and is just able to make it back to the line of scrimmage. One yard gain there for Ferry. He did get to the 35, got a yard, second and nine. Coming up for the profs here, man is down. That looks like number 18, Corey Gordon, the junior receiver. Gordon down, trainers out to 10 to him. We'll have a stop in action, 9.36 left. Profs in the midst of a drive. They're hoping guys either to either tie the ball game up or take the lead as we move into the final stages of this game. If you're rowing, you're gonna have to move the ball, not necessarily focus on a touchdown and scoring, just get the first down, First down by first down, and it'll come. That's what everyone's got to focus on because I feel like they've been focusing on the big plays too much. They haven't been focusing on the small things. Good, he's walking off number 18 for the Pross, but it's a big spot here. I mean, again, for the Pross, as Sam just said, I mean, it's going to be, again, a solid drive here is what is what is needed. And the Pross, again, down three, going to need at least a touchdown to, to walk off with this, with this win, but going to need to compile anything you can. A couple rushes from Farah and anything you can really get. Even if it's a, a big shot down the field, you gotta do anything to, do to uh, get on the board again. Guys, obviously Rowan hurt by Terry Carlstrom seemingly suffering uh, an injury in that first half. I mean, he had three catches, 33 yards in that first half and really seemed to have that connection with Noah Bernardi early on in the game I and mean, they've missed his presence offensively ever since. Yes, they have missed his presence and hopefully he's okay, hopefully he'll be Back in the lineup next week, but it's next man out. Now across the line in motion comes Shane Martin. 
Another handoff to Farah. He's pushed back to the 30. He'll just go down as the flag comes out as well right at the 30-yard line. That play stands. Farah's going to lose five yards or so there with the run. We'll check the laundry here from the officials. Play the process react and looks like it's going to be on them. Yeah, another penalty and penalties have been. I was going to say two times penalties been the name of the game tonight. And fast two times, the referee been saying no penalties. So, the penalties are going less tonight. Holding against Connor Smith, the left tackle. Makes it third down and 14 for the profs at their own 30 after Stevenson declined the penalty. The Farrer being pushed back on the run there. So third and long, 14 to go from the 30, up the middle, Farrah across the 30, can't get to the 35, stopped at about the 32. Now some pushing and shoving going on after the play. Profs only able to get a couple yards there, and they're gonna have to punt putting themselves in danger now of giving the ball back to Stevenson who has the three point lead guys and now it's really in their hands to just chew as much clock as possible here or score for a second time and take the two score lead. And if you take a two score lead, the Fox need to have air raid throughout the rest of the game to come back. Parigi punts it away. Flag is down, and this could be a rough in the punter call, actually, guys. We'll see what the flag is going to be. It, it does look like roughing the punter, but we'll wait and see the official call for the referee. What a huge call this would be. Both sides are winning the call. So holding against the Profs is going to net the Mustangs an extra 10 yards after the return. And that is going to put Stevenson here at their starting field position. Pick it up at their own 37. So first and 10. Here from their own 37, Nair Wilson will work with the two running backs set. Here comes a man in motion left to right across the line. That's Makai Walker. And the give is going to go to the man to his left. The feature back tonight, Elijah Marquez. And Marquez hit in the backfield that time. Marquez tonight just under 100 yards, 99 yards to be exact. Losing two more there. Second and 12 now at the 35 for the Profs. For the Mustangs, I should say. Now here's Wilson, empty set. Three wide receivers split out to his left. Takes the direct snap up the middle. He goes across the 45 near midfield. He's got a first down. Nair Wilson with the ledge that time made it happen, guys. A big first down for Stevenson. Clock keeps moving and they move the chains. Yeah, I mean, that's now his fifth rush of the night. And now he's just about 25 yards total in the, in the rush game again. Big guy, 5'10, 240, but he's been moving around at a good size. And again, he's trying to drive this game really out of reach for the cross. And Wilson, 25 yards on the night on the ground. 12 yard gain there. Wilson drops back. Screen out left side, pass is caught, and moving for another forest down near the Rowan 40 yard line. Pat Gordon with the catch, his eighth of the evening. And Gorman there gonna get 13 yards on the reception, so give him eight for 71 in the game. Leading receiver for either side. Another first down here for Stevenson. First and 10 from the Rowan 40. 6.22 to play. 
Crofts trailing by three. Give goes to Marquez. And Marquez will work his way to the 36 for a four yard gain. Second and six. Marquez over 100 rushing yards on the night. And he's been the focal point on the Stevens in offense. And for both teams, Roa and Stevens, their focal points have both been their backs. Wilson again, empty set. Rowan has got to be expecting the run here. Takes the snap, and there he goes up the middle, has the blocks, and he's knocked down. Looks like his own man might have gotten pushed into him. And it was Vincent Guarino that time applying the pressure. Credit him with the tackle. It's Josh Ortiz hustles off to the sideline for the profs. Going to get that dime back out there on third and four potentially here. 5.20 left to go. So third and four here from Stevenson at the Rowan 34 yard line. Wilson has got Marquez just to his right. He drops back. He's got time to throw, rolls out to the left and he's forced to throw it away as Rowan doing a great job applying pressure there. Carter Williams, the freshman, was able to stand in his way there and force Wilson to fling it off to the side. And now here comes the punting unit for Stevenson. Josh Dodd will send it away. Rowan gonna put a man back deep, it seems like. Although no one's back there yet, only the official standing at the goal line. And John Perez was going to take it and said they'll send Jason Blanks back there. Well, maybe not. <laughs> now we'll come back in. Rowan perhaps expecting a fake here with Don. Now he does get the punt off. It's a good one. This will stay in play, and Stevenson is going to down this ball at the one-yard line. And yeah. Josh Dodd, guys, who's listed on the depth chart as a receiver, has made two of the best punts I've seen in the wild tonight. Yeah, absolutely great punt there, one yard line. And it was a good, good defensive drive, a good defensive stop, I should say, for the profs there. They still couldn't get their hands on Wilson. They get into the pocket, but he obviously threw that ball away out of bounds. But uh, again, Dodd has been doing it. Again, this is a receiver, but two, probably the two best punts tonight, uh, both inside the 20 and then out of that one inside the one. And now you have 449 for the profs, down three. Gonna need to at least get a field goal to get it a tie and uh, go into overtime possibly with a 449. I mean, you never know. The drive would have to be a long one. Again, you're going 99 yards if you're trying to score. And that's what we'll have to do, 99 yards to take the lead. Looks like 98 yards, guys. My fault, they marked it at the two, not the one. So Rowan with a little more breathing in the room. But the left to go the length of the field. 449 left to play. Rowan trailing 20 to 17, first and 10. They go to James Farrah, just trying to get away from the goal line there. He's not going to get much. Stevenson may want a safety, but it looks like he was able to stay out of the end zone. It's going to be pushed back a yard, though. Second and 11 here now from the one for the profs. And obviously, you got to find a way not to take the safety because if you give Stevenson two points and the ball, they could wrap the ball game up. They could wrap the ball up. And for Rowan, they're going to have to keep it the ball with Farah. Quick plays off because if you go with an RBO pass, you could have risked a sack. Brunati standing in his own end zone. Takes the snap, he'll drop back to pass, fire over the middle. And a dangerous throw that time, double coverage on the tight end, John Scaliba. And Clarence Travis, the linebacker in there. Knocking that ball the way. Travis, tonight, he's been all over the field tonight. We've been talking with him all night. So he was looking for Silva there. Couldn't make the reception. And now Rowan at their own one yard line, third and 11 guys. And if they can't convert here, they're gonna have to punt basically with their back to the goal post. Never a situation you wanna be in. Let's see if they can get it here. Stevenson seemingly gonna bring a blitz. Here on third and 11, and running out of the end zone there for what is going to be a safety is Brunati. He didn't have enough room, but flag is out. We'll see what it is, but. I 
if it's against Rowan, you figure Stevenson will decline it and take the two points. And if it is against Rowan, running out of the end zone, we've seen it most, a couple times in the NFL with Dan Arlovsky mm -hmm. and Jimmy G most recently. So it happens to the best of us. Brunati was really hurried that time. Oh, and so before Brunati takes a step out of the end zone for what would be a potential safety, it's going to be a holding call against Stevenson. So there is no Dan Olofowski or Jimmy G <laughs> stepping out of bounds for Brunati tonight. And the profs pick up 10 yards on the holding call, fresh set of downs on their own 11-yard line, 3.52 left. Yeah, Mustang's 11th penalty of the night. That's probably the most crucial. That would have been, obviously, safety knew where to have the ball back. So Absolutely. now, see what the Pros can do now with another life. Brunati, he's pressured again, rolling out to his right. He's got to get rid of it, and he finally does, headed towards the Prof sideline. Stevenson has been able to get some pressure in his recent drive, making it tough for Brunati. Earlier on in the game, guys, he had time to step up in the pocket, make those throws over in the middle to Karlstrom and Denton as well, and that long throw at the end of the half to uh, Jade Shitty. I mean, obviously, Stevenson dropped eight or nine guys, but when he has time to throw, Brunati has shown to be very efficient. When he's hurrying, not so much. Second and 10 for him now. James Farah to his left. And hand it off to him. Farrer goes up the middle, lowers his shoulder, and is going to get to the 20-yard line. He'll pick up nine there. A good run for Farrah. It'll be third and one for the Profs, as now we've got three and a half left to go. And this is four down territory with the Profs. So you have to imagine here, they're going to yet again run the ball with James Farrah. Or they can go maybe a jet sweep with Decan. Yeah, and you talked, uh, Aaron talked about the defense. I mean, Clarence Travis, Breacher, Sally combined for 17 tackles in this game. Been the two monsters on the defensive side, and they're trying to stop the Profs from getting a score this time. Travis had that interception earlier as well. Third and two now officially, and the throw out to the right side is broken up, incomplete. Was looking for Farah on the swing pass out of the backfield, and now on fourth and two, just over three minutes left to go, Rowan will be forced to punt forced to punt here, and I would have this is four down territory with three minutes and three seconds left in the game, but you trust your defense, get the stop. Rowan does have those two timeouts. Their only chance would be to get a defensive stop and then march down the field. Not a lot of time remaining though, only 3.03. The punt is up from Parigi. And the fair catch called for right at midfield that time. And so Stevenson will start right at midfield, 50 yard line. 2.55 left, and so Rowan obviously didn't have to burn those timeouts. A couple first downs here from Stevenson could put this game out of reach. Nair Wilson, his two running backs set behind him, has been effective tonight. Elijah Marquez, 26 carries for 97 yards and a touchdown. He split out wide to the left. Man in motion right to left across the line is Walker. And the give is to Martez. He's going to slide down at the 40. And first play of the drive is going to move the chains for Stevenson. Or maybe he'll just be about a yard short as he slid down there. But put him at the 41. So a nine yard gain for Martez. Clock does stop. And now it continues to move. 240. Clock doesn't stop. Continues to move, stays in down, slides, doesn't get the extra yard because he's a team player. He wants this end the game. Under two and a half left to go. Here's Wilson. Marquez to his left. Give us to him. He's able to get over the 40. He'll get the two yards he needed. 
15 left to go. Stevenson now will earn a fresh set of downs. And Jade Forsey not electing to yet use that second timeout. Stevenson obviously taking their sweet time. Under two minutes left. Rowan really gonna probably need a turnover here. Stevenson will keep the ball on the ground, obviously. Marquez across the 35 to the 34. Five more yards there. And now a timeout for the props. Stop, Stop the clock to minute 39. Marquez on the night, 27 rushing attempts with 106 yards. You have to admit, Marquez has been the focal point of this offense. And as Aaron, you mentioned, in order for the props to win, they're gonna need a turnover. But, you know, there's been a lot of missed opportunities for props to not have Duquesne drop two wide open passes for a touchdown. One of them, a next play, would be a touchdown to Jake Skeens. But Duquesne did drop a wide open touchdown at the Stevenson 45 yard line. So you have to imagine the props said they have to get wanting to have that one back. Yeah, big spot here, second down and five. Again, first down most likely is gonna kinda kill all momentum uh, for the props. Again, need a stop, need a miracle here to get the ball back. And again, gotta score, you're down three with under a minute 40 to go. This Stevenson offense tonight has been effective. You look at total yards, not pacing the props at this point. Give the Dennis to Martez, and he is wrapped up right at the 35. A big play, he'll lose a yard there. Flying in to make the stop that time, number 65, and Gianni Deramo, and Deramo with a big play that time. So Martez loses the yard, it's third and six after the timeout here, a minute 34 left. If Rowan gets the stop, seemingly, Stevenson would have to punt unless they want to try a 45 plus yard field goal. But either way, Rowan is, if they can make the stop here on third down, most likely going to get the ball back. Okay, you get the stop, and let's just say Stevenson gets this field goal. That's a six point game, so you're going to have to be a touchdown or nothing. And even if you get six, you're going to have to get the extra point. Or if you want to go for a two point conversion, you go for the two point conversion. It's not windy anymore. And Perfect weather conditions for the extra point kick. Just something to keep in mind in the back of your mind. Yeah, to make a break clear, make a break play, I should say. Third and six. If they don't get a stop here, the game is uh, risky out of reach. And if they get this ball back, whether it's down six or down three, you've got to score. Martez the back to the left of Wilson. Rowan did a stat the box here. Playing the run, Wilson takes it himself, rowing out to the left, and he is gonna have the first down as he drags a rowing defender with him across the 30, down to about the 26. And Nair Wilson may have just put this game out of reach here late in the fourth. As you just said, he may have just put this game out of reach, and I think he did just put it out of reach. But for Rowan tonight, it's a lot of learning to do. Yeah, last year uh, the Profs lost a couple close games. Again, they only lost three games last year. They went seven and three. And now, really, Wilson, again, he has that Cam Newton build with the 240. I mean, he runs with authority, and he did it right there. You're big. comparing Wilson to Cam Newton. That, that's a big comparison right there. He showed it right there. Now he can just take a knee. Clock winding down, seven on the play clock, 52 on the game clock. Wilson waiting, 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 and... Never did take the knee, they'll just take the delay of game, I guess. Our first and 10. Back him up five yards. First and 15, they'll get moved back to the 31. Rowan will look ahead to next week. And they will be down in Maryland taking on McDaniel. But after that, guys, a run of three straight home games and a chance to avenge a loss here on opening night in Glassboro. 
And Wilson now will take the knee. Game clock will outrun the play clock by three seconds. And so that will be the final play of the ball game. Both sides exchanging some handshakes and a season for Rowan with such high expectations, guys. A game in which in the first half, offensively they looked really good. Defense made some plays. In the second half, you could see that Stevenson made the better adjustments and they shut out the props in the second half. They are going to win the season opener 20 to 17 with now five, four, three, two, one, and triple zeros up on the scoreboard. That is the ball game. Rowan will fall to 0-1, and Stevenson winning their opener here on the road in Glassboro. That is a fun game for sure. Obviously, you would have liked to see Rowan get to 1-0 to start their season off, but a team with so much talent, you figure they'll be able to rebound. Obviously, in the beginning of the game, a lot of adversity for the props were able to bounce back from that. Going into the break, just those adjustments both teams were able to make during halftime. Looked like Stevenson came out with all the answers. You're right, Aaron, and a lot to build on for Rowan. But tonight, their offense didn't, make, didn't look the same in the second half with the injury to Terry Carlson. And Carlson, who uh, we don't know why, what his injury was, we'll keep on hearing what exactly it will be, but that's a game change for them. They did not look like the same team without him. Yeah, defensively, I mean, you had an injury early in the first quarter, and obviously Small, hopefully he's doing all well, doing all right, I should say. And, I mean, even if defensive pressure, we saw it even on that last drive. I mean, Wilson just went right through the middle, kind of sealed the deal, and Marquez over 100 yards himself. I mean, this uh, Stevenson team, I mean, they came to play. Again, they were 8-3 last year, Prost 7-3. Prost last year started off 2-0, and and then they lost 2-2, two and two, and then they had to really went on a good tear at the end of the year, and hopefully they can do really the, I mean, not the opposite, kind of just uh, you start off with a loss tonight, but you got to get back in the win column, and hopefully, uh, again, you're not playing any NJAC opponents until October, so next three games, not NJAC opponents. You get Johns Hopkins September 30th here in Glassboro. It's going to be a good one again. Johns Hopkins beat the Stevenson team last year, and Stevenson uh, showed up the cross tonight 20-17. Mustangs take it 20-17 to here in Glassboro. Rowan will be back in action again on the road next Saturday, September 9th. They will take on McDaniel, searching for their first win of the season. Thank you all so much for tuning in here on Rowan Athletics for all the crew that has made this possible for my broadcast partners tonight. Sam Prince, Justin Locke, I've been Aaron Hook. We'll see you in a couple of weeks when Rowan comes back here to Glassboro. Good night.